It's Friday Night Live with your host, Wolf Brother Mythos and the Freak. And now for the car wreck of a show, the Frog and the Bill. Better late than never, I always say. What's going on, guys? <laughs> Which is good, because we'd never have a show, would we? <laughs> right? Oh, oh man. Bless what it. is up, beautiful people? It's Wolf Brother Meet Those. Ah, Freak! Welcome to the show! Welcome to the show, guys. Are we early for next week, I think, is what it is. Uh, I give it four minutes, eight if a beverage is required. Ah, I got one. Yes. I need one. Coffee. I got my lovely, my coffee lovely coffee. bride came by and and, and uh, brought me some coffee. I didn't even ask for it. How much I was stressing a little bit. Uh, of course, I'm I'm on call tonight and uh, work is being a di- work is being a thing already. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Oh. Richard Smith says, "Morning, beautiful people." Rich, my man. We, are we that late? Holy crap! No, it's a uh, it's more already morning across the pond. Hmm. Your son is out of the basement. <clears throat> I didn't let him out. We got Funkin' hungry here with all the foods ready to go. Hell yeah, I'm talking about. Ah, weather pig. Hey boys, I can hang out for a little. Good to see nice. you, brother. Uh, Funkin' hungry comes back on his Warhammer account. Going wah. Wait, wait. wait. Oh, is that a third account? <laughs> That's awesome. Holy cow, it's already on Friday. There's, I hope everyone's having a good one. Yeah, this week really flew by, but man, it's been a battle this week. Battle royale. Yeah. I'm done. What's a holy cow? Go to India. <laughs> we like to move it, move oh, it. Oh, God. Three likes and all for me. People are slack are slacking like a like wagon. <laughs> oh man, good to see you, G brother. Commodore, happy freaking Friday. Happy f- day. Hey guys, just gonna listen and hobby. COVID has taken control of the household. I have yet to experience the plague, but the wife and daughter have it, so we will see. Ugh. Oh no. Like you, I'm so sorry to hear that, man. Yeah, I hope your family gets better soon, Absolutely. brother. And I hope you manage to avoid it. Uh, Forge the Wild, Brother Atlas. What is up, beautiful people? Hey, man. Had another great D&D session with this guy this week. Uh, he is an awesome, phenomenal uh, GM. And uh, seeing him again tomorrow for some Warhammer along with Brother Oni. Uh, and uh, we'll be seeing Brother Lars, too. Oh, oh, he's going. Nice. Yeah, yeah. We That's gave him good, a spot. Man. There you go. <laughs> um, Marine, Brother. Hope you're doing well, man. How's that uh, massive Titan coming along? Mr. Fish, so many nights in the hobby right now. Much mechs, big wow. <laughs> I'm really, <laughs> I've really been enjoying working on my nights. I really have. I don't know why I've put it off for so long. Like, I really don't know why. I, now that I've started on it, I've, I've oh, no, genuinely... why? All right. Finish the bases for my boys. They're ready to be stopped by you tomorrow. I don't know, man. Like I showed you with that battle report, man. Uh, the custodians took out the knights. All that resilience is kind of the weakness for the uh, uh, the knights. And on top of that, you know, they don't really have any defense in Malay. I think custodians are a good count- counter. That's awesome. I, I think it's going to be a good game, man. I'm really looking forward to it. That Titan's on a three-day print right now. Oh, so it's just a little print to go, huh? Just a little Ooh. print. Uh, uh, I know I usually start with you on a hobby update, but since uh, Brother Oni brought up my knights, I am having my first uh, game with knights as an army. I've taken them as an ally before, but uh, hold on. Let me see if I can, I can get this in focus. Oh, it is in focus. But yeah, I picked up my Imperial Knights Codex. Oh, so pretty hyped about that. Nice. Yeah. 
because I've been watching um, YouTube videos and I had heard kind of like keeping an eye on, you know, what some of the things Auspex Act it says that they kind of changed a lot of how they work. And, you know, like the new, there's a couple of new rules and systems like the code chivalric system and the bondsman system and the fact that uh, preceptors don't just give or they, they no longer give uh, re-rolls to small knights, but they have a variety of buffs that they can give them chaplain style now. And so nice. I, I, it is very cool, but it's definitely for a new knight player going to be more to remember than just re-roll ones, you know? So, um, yeah, so I had decided I needed to swing by and actually get the book to have the information instead of just BSing it or trying to look up Google on my phone while gaming tomorrow. It's just going to make it much smoother. So, yeah, I'm getting my learning in. Um, that was cool. And, and while I was at the store, I got to talk a little horse heresy and uh, whatnot with the guys there. Uh, so it's been pretty cool. Also this week, I stopped in at a... Um, I stopped in uh, somewhere and happened to see um, one of the um, you know some people already have their hands on the the Mark Six putting them together painting them up those new horse heresy uh, troop models look really good they they were genuinely genuinely go you getting that horse heresy itch so we have an announcement horse heresy wise freak has come to a decision this week i have um so i'm gonna let you get back to you usually start off this port chop give us a little bit of your hobby update brother well i have uh re pushing on this uh gorgeous leviathan bad boy rot her Ooh, yeah. is looking sexy yeah she's turning out pretty good uh, i'm working on the uh, metallics um, got this guy. So I'm going to be working on that too. And since I didn't have this one, uh, I decided I, I find it and print it. So it actually turned out. Okay. Very nice. So, Very nice. So a little, little we're getting that, but yeah. Um, yeah, I'm pretty, pretty stoked with how, how so far the, the basing of the, the base coloring of the, this Levi, Le Leviathan actually turned out, man. Uh, it, I, th I think I love, I love the color transit. Yeah, the transitions really, yeah. really pop. Yeah, all this perfect shading and highlighting. Oh, <laughs> and that's just these two inks. So I, I'm, I'm super, super excited, man. Oh, I'm, I, I can never, and I'm, I'm gonna replace a lot of my, my air, my uh, airbrush shut. That's awesome. Huge, huge. As a matter of fact, I said, and I said, my family. Oh crap! Damn it! You know what? Get paint. Ah no! Go away! Bubbly. I just showed it off, and I had black paint. Oh, your mother. Ah. Fingertips. Yeah. Oh my god. I've done that before. No, oh, looks like this might be. That's the hard thing because inks are so translucent; it's hard to clean up on uh, something that's airbrushed ink. Actually, it's 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 the the paint the the orange paint's fine. Or the yellow paint's fine. Is getting this black off? That, that's what I'm saying. It's like you can't just cover it up. Oh yeah, yeah, with yeah, yeah. another coat of yellow. No, uh, no, ah, that's okay. What uh, you know what? You put a decal there. No one will notice. Yeah, that's a good spot for one, too. So, happened. Anyway. Weatherpig says, just found an amazing model from Kings of War who will make an amazing custom troll for my Mordor army. Nice. Oh, but is it amazing? I'm looking forward to seeing that, brother. Yeah. So, um... Yeah, so I've been working on this bad boy. Um, like I said, I was got him all assembled up, painted up for the most part, and uh, get him um, together because um, because for my birthday, nice little food I own. That's something. 
<laughs> Talk to Darklight. And he says he doesn't have a schedule for next week yet, uh, but they usually come out soon, so he's going to do everything in his power to be there. And he's super hyped that you invited him. Oh, man. So, uh, last we talked on the show, you were pretty settled on Luna Wolves, huh? Uh, sort of, kind of. Settled is a big word, you know? I mean, kind of states finality. I really was dating that much. <laughs> finality. I don't mind my voice going up like that. Um... <laughs> But then he got to look in that door. Dorn yes. is, Dorn is an aspiring boy. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? This is kind of silly. So I, I have, I have uh, Dorn as uh, my Primark. You know, he's actually in my box. He's not been painted, and I'm thinking, it's kind of silly to start a whole army, and I have the damn Primark sitting in my box. I can run uh, Imperial Fist. Um, 30k. Let's go 30k. I'm okay with that. I approve my own message. <laughs> Took me a little while to finally, you know, down to it, but that's what it is. I like my decision. I'm sticking to it. Right on. Very cool. 40k birthday bash bonanza extravaganza, correct? That's what uh, Oni says. Sure. It's gonna be a little everything thing. Yeah, so. Some, some food, some um, karaoke. Uh, Annie, are you okay? What? What? <laughs> Annie, are you okay? Would you tell us that you're okay? Anything. Crap. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Well, pretty, pretty excited about that, man. Really, really. I'm um, not going to lie. I, I think the, the 30K fists, especially the ones... That they've been showing off for a lot of new models on their website. I think the 30k color scheme. I really is just my favorite Imperial Fist color scheme. Yeah, I totally agree. Oh, I'm 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 pretty stoked myself. Love the idea. Why? Because I gave it to myself. <laughs> so. No, man. Seriously, I I'm I'm really excited about it. I'm, I think that's awesome. Nothing else, man. I, I am. I'm actually excited to see you. So excited for your heresy army. Like uh, Brother Oni saying, they're getting that heresy itch. Oh, what happened? Excited. Just talking. Um with uh my local gw manager you know i chat with him a bit whenever i go in the store he's a cool guy he doesn't ask and... you to go in the back like he does oni huh <laughs> Dif a different store manager oh god okay, okay gotcha okay. so I don't, I don't know i don't know the tactics I'm... i i mean i don't know if that store manager would um uh, you know would ask me to go into the back like they did oni oh. I mean, you know there's there's no telling i mean I mean, there's a reason to lock Oni into the basement. So good, you know. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put it off the table, you know. I do, <laughs> get, I do get offers sometimes, you know. <laughs> I get all the weird encounters, law. <laughs> That's why he locks you up for your safety. Doing this for your own good, slam. Um, but yeah, so he was talking about how he's getting the other four Houston area GW stores. They're going to do a, um, 
instead of doing the usual escalation league, it's going to be an escalation league with the twist in the area. And they're going to have something called. Okay, so in the heresy, uh, before uh, I, I want to give a little background for anyone who's not that familiar with the 30K books. In the heresy, um, you know, the, the different um, primarchs and sometimes, you know, within a legion, you know, more than just the primarchs, you know, different um, fleets that belong to the primarchs would have different um, different uh, fleet numbers, uh, you know, of uh, which which expedition they are they were, you know, crusading in the galaxy, trying to bring the emperor's light to everyone. This is before the actual heresy. This is this is when they're all crusading around, bringing the emperor's light and the emperor's justice to all corners of the galaxy. And uh, you know, they were all known. As, they're always known as their fleet number. You know, so the the two hundred and first or whatever, whichever that whatever their fleet number was, was kind of like how their their detachment was called. And so, you know, a lot of the times, um, if a fleet was made up largely uh, or in service to a particular legion, you know, it would be noticed that this was, you know, the such and such fleet. You know, in service to the emperor's children or the word bearers or whoever. So, anyways, each of the stores, as in most um, uh, most uh, chain businesses, each of the stores has a store number in our area, and so their store number is becoming their expedition number. Oh, what? And so, you know, like uh, our current store is the hundred and fifth, right? And so they're going to be the the 105th fleet and the 105th expedition is going to be just like that. They can, there's going to be expedition days where players that are registered with one store can go try and kick ass at another store and rack up points for their own store. And, uh, so it's going to be like an ongoing, um, camp, uh, 30 K campaign, um, between the different stores in the Houston area. And then they're eventually going to, put together some kind of prize for the winning store. Pretty that was pretty neat. Pretty neat. Pretty I'm not really interested in driving to the different sections of Houston to play a game, so I don't think right. I'm going to be one it's, of the... It's still a great incentive for a lot of people. Oh, oh, yeah, and I'd be down to show up sometime to maybe be a defender, you know, uh, for the store. Because uh, somebody's got to battle them when they come to try and kick ass at our store. Unless it turns out I'm no good at 30k. In that case, I'll let somebody else. <laughs> oh, you can do this, guy. <laughs> you're you're. <laughs> Getting offered to go in the back. Oni said he just said yes without any hesitations. <laughs> that's why you get. That's why you get the weird offers. You're a yes man. <laughs> Yes, men get all the fun. But he, he he gets all the stuff, though. He gets the goods. He does get the goods. Good. You have, I mean, you know, works that way in life, too. You have the fun, you get the goods. Good. That's how we end up with sugar daddies. Or sugar mamas. Either are good. Yeah. I, we don't discriminate. I mean, we don't care who's opening the wallet down at Chippendale's. Right. We are e we are equal opportunists. We'll take anybody's money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. Um, so I definitely have to say, I feel like the current our current GW manager, as opposed to the old one, and definitely as opposed to uh, the old store we used to uh, go to yeah. that was non GW, All right? Definitely seems like he is into the idea of doing things for the community. That's pretty. That's some insight. I like that. Yeah. Things that can actually, you know, bring people in and not run them off. Uh, 
tough. But hey, that other store really did us a favor. I mean, by running us out of town, I mean the store. Right. And not like freaking I got kicked out just by kind of running the Warhammer players out of the store. Right, right, right. It's kind of what um, he was so convincing. <laughs> Uh, that's kind of how Freak and I ended up doing this uh, Friday Night Live stream, because Friday used to be the night we'd go over. Yeah, it was game night. Friday was game night, man. Yep. We'll record a game. We'll, we'll, we'll record a, an episode and play a game. A couple games. Out. Have a good time. And, man, man, we were the guys. He'd bring Whenever that store owner would get new people looking to buy 40K, uh in uh you know from his store we would be the people that he'd come over and bring upstairs and be like yeah these are our regular players here right you know they uh they can they, show uh, you they can show you they'll fill you in and blah 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 yeah. and we right, man and they're here every friday so if you want to get started there's already a community here i'm pretty sure we ended up making that that person some money Which is fine. Uh, hey, I man. To go the Your house are rules, baby. It's all right. Yeah. It's just a shame. It is. It is. And don't get me wrong. I love the new GW store. It's really, really nice. The only thing is that, you know, it's it's a strip center. It's only got like two and a half tables. Right. It is tiny. We're, we're used to, you know, the our old store had like eight massive tables yes. custom made for the shop. Uh, so much fun. Horrible acoustics, though. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think the place was made with budding YouTubers in mind, so. Super fly checking in. How goes one and all? Hello. Oh, uh, we just slapping down a little paint, brother. Having yeah. a good night. Feeling trying to forget our work troubles because uh. we have both definitely had some work troubles this week. I have work troubles. Oh. Oh, not going into any detail. But I took the advice uh, you and Lily were giving me about how, you know, if, uh, you know, I, certain parties don't want to cooperate, not giving me what I need, go ahead and drop them in the grease. Sure. Because at the end of the day, I got to turn in what I got to turn in. So I do everything you can do and is and. You no, know, giving them the chance, give them the opportunity. That's good. What you working on there, Mister Mythos? I am currently working on the shoulder pad for an Imperial Knight. This will be the final, you know, that is kind of, um, my, my port chat, by the way, is I said at the end of the last show that if everything went well, um, by some, uh, sometime this week, I would have my second armature done. Very and nice. I did. Very nice. But then last night, I finished my third armature, the Helver, in this time. And so now that is everything I need for my 1,500-point list. I finished it up. I have a picture that's posted in our Discord. I'll be posting it to Instagram later. But my 1,500-point force is done, which leaves me only one night away from my uh 2000 point army i are there other knights i would love to add like the big lancer with the spear and shield the uh the one you have with the sword and the mega vulture um 
uh, the new ones, the 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 Valiant with that cool triple melta and a big ass uh, harpoon. That looks really cool. Remember when Glass did a conversion with that, and he had like a big uh, a big ass dreadnought on the ground with the spear through it oh, or yeah. the harpoon through yeah, it, yeah, yeah. and then they made the chain go into it. That's pretty. I've always remembered that because I was like, oh, if I ever got one of those, that's kind of a. It was always look. really good about you know, kind of really. Cool Oh yeah, conversions and stencils were definitely his yeah. forte. <laughs> um, so yeah, maybe something like that. And then like um, the other big boy, the Castellan with the volcano cannon and the giant plasma. All those things would be cool, but maybe someday down the road. For now, I'm gonna get to two th a full two thousand point army okay. and say done for now. Got other projects. This is where where that army is for now. It's fun. It's and there's something freeing about f in feeling like I am only one model. And now it's a big ass model. It's the biggest night I have, um, but one model away from saying I'm done with an army. There's something very freeing about that. Double. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm going to be. Uh, this is one of the Serastus knights I'm painting right now. It's a uh, called the Atropos, and I'm gonna admit when I first started, and this sucker was like in like a very kind of like dark gray gunmetal primer for the better part of a year, or maybe two years actually. Um, and I've just been looking at it this for the last couple of years, thinking. Man, it's just this is such a big canvas, pretty intimidated. But uh, and you know, I've I've been looking through different color schemes other people have done with the Atropos all this time. And uh, anyways, finally, I just I settled on one that I would like to use as my inspiration and just tried not to think about it too much. You know, just start laying down paint and. Now that I've started, I'm really excited with the direction I'm going. And also, I think part of its execution, I think this is some of the best airbrush shading and highlighting I've done to date. And I'm really excited about it. And and the color scheme is just coming together in my head, you know. Because some people do their big nights as just like solid color, kind of like, um, you know, one might do with the smaller nights. But I figure, feel like there's more sections and places to differentiate on the bigger nights and i just don't want to leave it just solid you know i could have just done the whole thing spray it blue a couple shadows done but i think i've got two tones both with that airbrush highlighting that very delicate look and i think it's coming out better for it yeah, i really like it man i really like what you've done i don't want to hear any more of your crap uh really better than me Airbrush and blah, 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 blah. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll stop uh, for now until the next time <laughs> you're like, so check out this uh, eyeshadow and mascara I airbrushed on. <laughs> and I'll be like, what do you mean, freak? Is, is that just a Tuesday? And you're like, no, no, on the mini. And I'm like, oh, shit. That's rough. I hope this weekend starts a better cycle. I appreciate it, bud. Oh, a little story to share with you. So the chest piece was one of the pieces I was most proud of with this airbrush transition, right? And um, anyways, I was doing the gold trim and on a little spot, I had the gold... You know, I I, uh, I missed, you know, I, I had a slight misstroke. And so I still had some black on my wet palette from earlier. And I just went to clean it up, right? You know, cover it up with a little black. It was the wrong black. It was the shiny contrast black Templar Ooh. instead of the matte black I'd been working with on the model previously. And so you have this soft matte black with soft transition to kind of gray light gray in the center of the panel 
And then just like in the lower left corner of that, just a splat of shiny black. And I'm like, Ugh! like I didn't, I, I, I did said it, didn't think about it last night because I just figured that was just it while it was drying. But when I woke up the next morning and it was just a big shiny black circle on top of these soft transitions, I thought for sure I was going to have to uh, sh uh, just spray it black and start again. And, uh -huh. and I was very frustrated. And then here's a little hobby tip for anyone. I decided to try something and I went and grabbed my map uh, varnish and I sprayed it two thin coats. First one down, it was a little better. Let it dry and air out completely. Another layer down. And by the time that one dried, it blended that shiny black into the soft matte black and came out, saved it. Look at that. Quick on the draw, baby. Yeah, yeah. Good save. <laughs> Sometimes those times under pressure is when you find new hobby acts. Like, oh crap, what, what did I do? How do I fix this? Someone once said that the uh, necessity. Uh, someone once said that necessity being the mother of invention. That's fair. That's fair. Oh, I got into it again with that um, branch manager that doesn't get along that uh, get along with me. Really? Yep. I guess you know I was you know I, I had a feeling that there were still some some raw feelings between us from the previous time. Right. But they called up. We had another kind of problem, you know, problem with one of my clients and uh, the same one. And he still doesn't really like that client from that last problem we had. And I'm sure he still didn't like me. You know, right. after I called him a D to his face. Right. <laughs> and, oh, uh, he shouldn't have been a D. Right. Uh, Simple, though. And this person's definitely got a... All PP complex, huh? Yeah, that macho kind of attitude, like, you know. So anyways, so we had to have a conference call and because of a stressful situation on site, they're like, well, we need what we need, right? That's you know, good. Uh, like my corporate client. Right, right. But I mean, you know, man, I mean, because of, um, because of, you know, stuff going on in the country, we have manpower shortages all across the country right now. And, um. You know, they're like, well, you know, we really need what we need. And, you know, we just need to know if you can provide it. Yes or no. And the person, the, the douchebag, the one I called the D to his face, right. kept not answering the questions, kept an answering questions with questions kind of deal. It was very transparent that they were stalling. Right. Right. And so finally, the corporate client was just like, I, it's, it's a simple question. Can you do this or do we need to look elsewhere? Oh, that. And oof. He called him out on his smoke and mirrors, right? Anyways, so today comes around and we have a little pre-meeting before the follow-up meeting on whether or not we're going to be able to accommodate certain things. You know, have we been able to locate manpower and this, that, and the other? And like I said, 
you know, there's certain things going on right now that there's nationwide manpower problems. It's yeah. it's it's the economy. I mean, yes. you can't really do anything yes. about it. And anyways, so this the person I said, really, you don't have anyone at your whole branch. You can't add one or two bodies there. To, and it's like, I'm going to be I'm, I'm going to be real honest with you. After the way that meeting went yesterday and, you know, the way they talked to me, I don't want to do shit for your client. And I'm like, okay, I understand that your feelings are hurt, but this is customer <laughs> service. They're, they're the customer. Right? Oh, that's awesome. And, and basically, but it was funny because before they said that, they said, uh, okay, listen up, Mythos. Uh, well, I want to call and have a discussion about this uh, before we go into this meeting. I don't want to fight because, you know, I told you we got into that shouting match the previous time. Yeah. He's telling guess, you this? Yeah, I guess. I oh. guess he's, that was like a year and a half ago. I guess he's still oh. feeling some kind of way about it. He started off with, I don't want to fight. I don't want to shout like last time. OK, we just need to talk. It is what it is. And we just need to talk about what we're going to do about it. Uh-huh. But <laughs> but it's funny because he started out with the I don't want to fight. Let's just talk about so that it. That means he wants to fight. Yeah. And, yeah. And then he immediately went into after the way they talked to me yesterday. I don't want to do shit for your client. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What? <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> why would you intend? This? That'd be almost like saying That's you know an oxymoron for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to. I, I don't want to fight. Okay. But your mom is a hoe. Right. Like wh what? Yeah. I don't <laughs> want to fight. Like, I don't want to fight. But yeah, why would you say it's this true. To me? Because I'm because I'm saying it because I don't want to fight, man. I just want to, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, but, straight up. <laughs> so, anyways, I said so. You know, I mean, he's like, but we have. Uh, I said, you know, so I understand your feelings are hurt, but this is a customer service business. In the end, we need to offer things to the customer, and when they pay us, give them what they pay for. Right. And uh, he goes, yeah, but we have other customers too. Oh, said, this is a great uh, way for him to lose his job. So oh. I'm thinking, so I said, and and who ate him? Who's he saying this in front of? This was just a one-on-one -on -one call on you before okay. the meeting. Okay. So this was like our pre-meeting call. I guess he was trying to gauge whether or not I was going to take his side or the customer's side. Uh huh. Uh, I get paid by the customer. They right. signed my checks. Right. Uh, right. Right. So, anyways, um. Yeah, so I said that to him, and he got kind of huffy that I would talk to him like that. So he's like, okay, well, before this uh, conference call happens, I need to call my RVP, <laughs> which I was going to call his RVP anyways because, you know, like that's what I'm supposed to do in a situation like this, just our department's working together, right? Right. So he, he thinks he's going to jump the gun on me and call him first. I don't know what his RVP said to him, but 10 minutes later we got on the call. He was the nicest, most professional. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I'm going to talk to my RVP and I'll tell you what he says. Uh -huh. Never even brought up his name. Yep. Yep. Somebody got their hand popped. Uh huh. At the pee pee where? That was very satisfying. <laughs> Man, he should have STF. All he yeah. had to do. Miles, uh, job and you're absolutely right you're in a business customer service yeah i said there no nah, hey well we got other customers really i mean I think that that's you... that's that you you think first of all you don't run this sucker <laughs> so you're not the yeah you run this little island of the company right but there's a bigger fish in control of the company. you're telling you're telling other people that Ah, you know what? Screw them all. Got other customers. Yeah. Try losing that one. We don't, along we your don't job. need your We don't need your, uh, we don't need your, your money. money. Yeah. We got other people's money we can take. Huh? Yeah, no. On you, man. I know that'd have been satisfying. It was one of those where I was like just kind of shaky and mad at the time that I said it and it wasn't trying to say it to get digs at him I was just mad and I wanted to resolve this as fast as possible right however 
when he turned his attitude around, then it felt satisfying. Yeah, 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 yeah. Finally realized oh, he's not gonna win. <laughs> and it's sad. It's it's th dude. You're on the same freaking team. Oh, man, if I had a dime for every time that I've said we're supposed to be on the same team. I wonder if all companies are like this, where locals just don't like corporate. I don't know about that. I mean, oh man, it just doesn't make. They're not, you know. It's like they think they're they're these ex little entities, you know, little islands. Yeah. Dumb boy, you dumb. And I guarantee. You, above you having conversations with you. the fact that he went probably called or when he talked to uh, to his boss after you talked to him I'm sure that was kind of like holy crap moment <laughs> good man I'm glad and you know sadly Sadly, you know, it, it's it, it has to come down to some of those those situations. Well, you don't want them to, you know. You you would hope that realize, hey, we're on the same team here. We're trying to trying to get as much as we can from the customer and provide them the services that they're paying for. And in return, you know, we keep our jobs, kind of situation. You know, yeah. So let's just work together. Let's not be bag. Let's just, you know, first of all, you don't own this company. Yeah, get out of the way. There, she could. Um, and secondly, don't pay my bills. You know, that guy there that you don't like, the one that you say, hey, screw those guys, yeah, he pays the bills. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, I, I, it, trust me, there's many a time that I, I have wished that I didn't have to deal with you know, client stupidity, but it's that amazing client stupidity. on yeah uh, hey. the agreed agreed anyways we'll get off work talk uh i'm sure that's not exciting for the folks at home uh but i just wanted to vent a little bit yeah man oh uh, family here i am Right now, I saw earlier today I painted. Oh, I said because it's been one of those like actually hectic weeks. I've been on so many conference calls that I've managed to just really chip away at a lot of night painting this week, which is I think why I've got so much done. So earlier today, I managed to touch up the breastplate again, and I did the gold trim on the shin plates. The sh I'm doing the shoulder pads right now. I, I did the chest plate. I did the the, the crotch protector. Um, vent away. It's all. Sometimes it's all we can do. I appreciate that, guys. Yes. Um, I did the crotch plate. I did the helmet today. <coughs> and so, <laughs> I like, like the Roman helmet. <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, I did the knight's helmet, and then now, uh, I've once I finished these shoulder pads, really just got to finish working away at the weapons and um, the skeleton, you know, the, the base chassis. And uh, yeah, then I think I'll be ready to start assembling. Awesome. I uh, d already did the oil wash on the skeleton. So, yeah, just knocking it away in stages. Oh, um, you can, dude. Yes. So, and you get, can't believe you got your knife. Yeah. Yeah, I need to get, I need to get points. All right, nine army. I think once I got the first one done and I started looking at, well, I'd already done the airbrushing for um, most of the night army all in one go. And then, uh, once I started knocking out a couple of them, I went ahead and I think like you used to do with your um, your dry erase board. Yep. 
being able to see the target. Yep. So what I did was I went into Battle Scribe and I punched in all my knights just to see how many points I had, <laughs> yes. what kind of army I could make out of it, yeah. you know. And once I had the army like in a list form, right, that gave me the the goal in sight, you know, the 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 finish line. So to yeah, speak. yeah, yeah. And being able to see it written down like that is, I don't know, it changes the perspective there. Yeah, it does. Dude, this... I think it, because it feels less like you're just plugging away. Right. At, you know. Uh, like you're grinding. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. At a, 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 a mass shapeless uh, form. Yes. <laughs> and, you know, it makes it look like a more tangible goal. Right. Oh, psst, Mythos, did you buy anything this past week? No, no, oh, no, 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 no. That is not the question, Brian. <laughs> the question would be, Mythos, did you trip on anything by chance <laughs> and you saved your fall to the crypt? I did. <laughs> oh, my God. So, Saturday, uh, Brother Greg has been inviting us to join... His uh, gamers with uh, coffee chat for a few a few weeks now, and yes. I was finally able to make it this week, this past week. Made it on Sunday, and I thought it was just going to be one of his normal, you know, um, Sunday hangouts. And oh, sh oh no! <laughs> uh oh, no! Where's that stupid? Oh God, where'd you go? Freaking brush went into oblivion, and it splashed all over my model. No, not your time. Ugh. Oh, there it is. <laughs> uh, Good thing Odie I says, concrete. no, it was him who tripped. Ah, <laughs> uh, dang it! It. One way to get uh, in washing model black <laughs> and then get up. Oof. So I went into um, Greg's chat thinking it was going to be a normal Sunday hangout and chat. And to my surprise, I hop in and they're setting up for a uh, game of Zombicide over the uh, over the webcam with Mini Warmut hosting. Nice. It was on Greg's show, but uh, Mini Warmut had the cam he had a double a fetch double camera set up over the board, and basically, where do you want to move? Let's roll the dice for you. Wow. You know, it was, it was very cool. He hosted the whole thing. It was very interactive. Nice. Being able to play a board game over over Zoom, essentially, that is and. Uh, it was definitely super cool and like i've seen zombicide played before and it looked like it seemed like the kind of game like i'd watch a let's play of but i didn't really actually think you know I'd, I'd actually um i didn't really have that much of an interest in playing myself until i showed up and was like oh it's the game and they were like yeah man let's get you a character and i got to play sylvester stallone um because there's a model for him they have they do a bunch of tribute models and so there's like so you got Russell. to play? Yeah, I got to play. Got to play. So what do you think? I saw that they were setting up for a game, and I was about to bow out and be like, oh, guys, I didn't mean to interrupt. And they're like, yeah, let's get you a character. And uh, Mini Warmut hooked me up with Sylvester Stallone, uh, uh, his character from Expendables. And so that was my survivor, and we were doing awesome. Greg got in a police car and was just like, Doing donuts in the streets, running over zombies. Um, it was it was an awesome time. Uh, Brian from Weird World War II. Uh, he was playing a priest guy who could uh, basically take any melee weapon and enchant it to become um, a damage three weapon with his holy might. You know, it was it was a lot of fun. In fact, it was so much fun. Again, I went into this thinking. Uh, that you know this is one that i like to you know i like to watch yeah, i've watched like it on like mini warzone's channel and you know whatnot before but i've never had an interest in it but when i played it it was so much fun guess what was in the amazon cart the next day 
Yep, I got the Zombicide Second Edition. Uh, also, I've got a Sylvester Stallone because uh, Mini Warma got me hooked. And yeah, it was fun. And I, we played with the family. Well, we played. I play, Lily and I played with, you know, the girls. And uh, they kept saving my butt because, like, everybody was doing awesomely. And then I'd go to kill a couple of zombies. And every time I'd whiff at least you know, a good chunk of my rolls and then get surrounded by zombies. <laughs> and they'd have to come save me. <laughs> but it was it was uh it was good times you know the ladies really really showed up like the cavalry uh, i've been saying a while it's uh for us to play zombicide it's so good it's so good uh i also although i bought massive darkness too which is very cool I, i'm looking forward to seeing that too uh you should probably get one of those elastic bands put on top of the ends of your brushes so when you drop it it'll just bounce back Oh, my brush, boy. <laughs> <laughs> it bounced back, missed his glasses, and catch him in the eye. <laughs> that would be my life. Oh, God, my eye! Shoulder pad number two, finito. I was uh, when I was playing with the family because my Sylvester Stallone hasn't come in yet. Uh -huh. I played a character named Odin, um, and uh, he comes with, and he well, he uh, his his figure comes with an axe, and uh, his special ability. Well, the name like Odin, what do you expect? <laughs> uh, and his special ability is he gets an extra attack with any melee weapon, and uh, that was that was cool except for. I would like I would roll three dice to hit something and only hit once every time. <laughs> if if that, I was having some of your farfel rolls. <laughs> That's okay. I rolled well when I was playing with the guys. Oh, uh, heads up. If you want to check out um, Gamers with Coffee again on Sunday, we will be wrapping up the game that we started last Sunday. Uh, so, you know, if anyone wants to check that out, see me gaming with a couple of legends, uh, a couple of celebrities. I may even try and get an autograph. Um, yeah, you guys can check that out on Sunday over the, on the Gamers with Coffee channel. You think Mini War Mud will give me an autograph? That kind of guy. Who are you? Frost and Fit? Okay. Yeah, here's your autograph. Who are you? I, I'm Freak. Who? You know, Freak? Frost and Fist? Goes back into. Bounce comes back out. Got his old duty taser. <laughs> I think this is for you, sir. Oh, God! <laughs> yeah, Greg just received Zombicide Invader and is impressed with how the survivors look like Space Marines. Yeah, I love that, too. I would decide to go with a uh, second edition instead of the Invader starter set just because uh, I thought the um, Lily and the girls would prefer more the... Uh, uh, modern day survivors and zombie apocalypse vibe as opposed to the space marine vibe um, but I definitely would love to get my hands on uh, those uh, invader space marine guys at some point although Zombicide is a massive game so I just really added to my thank you So, I don't think I've mentioned to chat. Maybe I have. Uh, I think I might have mentioned it last Friday. I had a challenge for myself. Learn drums 90 days. Um, I've been kicks hit. Uh, been a lot of fun. But, you know, it's a... I can't, you know... Uh, 
sometime and long and short you know i figure you know this i, I really would like to have something for Uh, so, trigger professional level of <laughs> happy birthday to me. <laughs> Crazy part about it is that uh, I've been playing on her kit, playing in general. I've been hell of a workout. Those. Are I don't know if you guys play drums. Anybody plays drums? I just started. So I'm a. But I have concepts of rhythm and all that. So I could be um, rhythm driven. So problem with that. Oh, man. That is a. Me warm it says I'm honored to have you aboard. You are the legend, Mythos. No, you're breathtaking. Little Keanu Reeves for you there. You don't know what? Oh, I was talking about the game for Sunday. I mentioned trying to get his autograph. He's like, No, I'm honored to have you, Mythos. You're the you're a legend. You're the legend. I was like, No, you. And then I quoted Keanu Reeves. You're breathtaking. From Keanu Reeves breaks the internet. What? It's like been like the biggest meme of the last two years. I've never seen it. Like you haven't seen. Conception was pre-meme culture, sir. Oh, it wasn't. Say that. Because Inception was pre-meme culture. You know, um, when they unveiled uh, Cyberpunk 2022, um, the video game, they uh, did never announced that Keanu Reeves was going to be in the game. Instead, they had Keanu show up at E3 and present the game. And everybody was like, why is Keanu Reeves here? Right. And they did the demo where he, he's in the video game. And uh, they're like, oh, my God, Keanu's in the game. It looks breathtaking. Keanu grabbed the mic and said, you're breathtaking. Oh, my God. I. And, uh, yeah, that's just become one of the biggest memes. Which I liked because, you know, that's the kind of joke we do all the time. No, you're blah, blah, blah. Right. I step it. <laughs> that time we were doing the whole bit for uh uh eating beer <laughs> oh yeah uh you were, you were holding a sign and i just turned to you like hey does this shirt me look <laughs> i love <laughs> that he just awkwardly looks at the camera and closes the blinds <laughs> wait nick pretend you didn't see them <laughs> A missile, Nick. <laughs> Good people. Good Saint Nick. So, I know knights are supposed to be pretty tough. But just because of the type of game I'm used to playing, I'm kind of intimidated to have a game tomorrow where I'm only bringing six models. <laughs> I even showed Lily. I said, yep, this is my army for Saturday. She goes, that's it? <laughs> I was like, yep. 
That's yeah, it. Yeah, but you're packing a ton of firepower and a ton of armor, so. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said. Very bird. <laughs> Take down. Good morning, Elston Nation. Man, myth, legend, icon. Now that is a legend. That guy right there. That guy. He's a legend, and I think he's a little crazy. Because, you know, we find every now and then he just wants to come on our show, and I'm like, why, why? I was about to say, he's our kind of crazy. For yeah, sure. man. We are like, uh, do you? Oh. Brain cells. Time you hang out with us. The disclaimer? I was about to say, I'm not sure celestial beings need sleep, so maybe that's how he's able to get up on time to come to our show. Grumpy. I'll get man. Grumpy's outrightly admitted he doesn't sleep. I know. He was I'm a... good, guys. And yes, with uh, crazy comes with uh, and yes, crazy comes with the territory. Yeah. <laughs> how have you been, my epic painting legendary friend? Get him back on, man. <laughs> and the breeding program. <laughs> yes. Yes. Can't forget the freak breeding program, Ooh, guys. Ooh, I need to get some clips of you guys for a video. Hey, freak now. Do I need to wear anything? Feeling? This is our version of when Oni got asked in the back of the store. <laughs> hey, guys. That's all fine. A thousand models in the last couple of weeks. Oh, my Holy gosh. Crap. Wear Chip, uh, Chippendale stuff. You oh, got it. I'm on it. Definitely on it. Castle's okay. Just tassels, or there's a lot of options. Bow ties, tassels, a tassel, all one. Let's say we need at least the one tassel, so that way it, yeah. it, it can be visible. Right. Just like a marker. You know? You, know, you know how, like, on a map, you know, it says you are here? That's That's basically... You know, in um, martial arts, things like the throwing knives and the uh, Chinese broadsword and stuff like that, the spears, they have like the red flittering tassels. Uh, oh, yes. To, uh, it's especially useful for demonstrations because right. it draws the eye, right? Right. That's exactly the same reason. Just like a martial artist, that's exactly why we have the tassels. Yeah, that's 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 why. Tells me to find it, <laughs> but because it draws the eye. Draws the eye. I'm like, oh, there it is. And I can pull the little drawstring. <laughs> Someone's like walking the dog. Come on. When you said pull the drawstring, I just thought about those um, blinds that you got to pull the cord for. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Just. <laughs> Uh, tassels are fine. I would prefer clamps, but this is suffice. Clamps? I don't know. Appropriately. What's funny is, you ever hear someone's voice enough that you read their comments and hear it in their voice? That's why I love reading the uh, Horus Heresy books. Um, you know, like on paper or whatever, and I, I actually hear the uh, the narrator that reads the books on um, on Audible. Um, mm -hmm. I actually hear that voice. Just like when you're reading Dresden, you have to hear James Mark. I do. I actually freaking do. Don't give them targets for the quarter rolls. Oh. Guys, I wear tassels because it draws the eye. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I 
what you gents have is exploded meat <laughs> syndrome. It uh, is a uh, a condition in which the primary um, the primary uh, traits are uh, exploded nuts. <laughs> so uh, there's nothing that can be done for you at this time. <laughs> By the way, I saw the show last night. Killer show. <laughs> oh, God. Horrible. Wrong pink. Is my gorgeousness watching the show right now? Just, sure. just, just testing if my lovely lady is watching the show. Well, you know you're not going to find out until you get a boot to the head if you say something stupid, right? You're going to say something stupid. Don't do it. We all have to witness the death of me, those on, on live stream. Earlier this week, I saw my life flash before my eyes. <laughs> I was drinking coffee at my hobby desk using one of Lily's brand new Viva La Dirt League mugs. And I was priming with Vallejo Surface Primer. Oh. Now, those of you who have never used Vallejo Surface Primer before. Oh, no. I've discovered the hard way in the past. If you get primer on your family uh, kitchenware, that stuff does not want to come off. And so, oh thank no, and you. Thankfully, I immediately took it to the kitchen. Okay, well, not immediately because I didn't realize <laughs> it at first. You know, sometimes you get those splutters from the airbrush and you're not sure where it goes. You're like, oh, that was a weird splutter. And so, anyways, I was priming, la da 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 da. -da. So clean out the brush. There was a little splutter, and I look up, and on the crisp white porcelain is just like a a a, a, a flick of primer that had already started to congeal on the cup, and my life flashed before my eyes. Uh, and so I took it immediately to the kitchen and I washed and I scrubbed and I flicked with my fingernail until all the little uh, primer bits came off. And, and it, it's fully clean now. I managed to rescue it. But man, that was a good, good like 15 minutes of scraping and cleaning and watching my life flash before my eyes. I have fear! <laughs> Why are you still alive? <laughs> <laughs> See, I was afraid to use anything like LA Awesome because, like I said, it was one of her brand new Viva La Dirt League mugs, which love Viva La Dirt League, but I didn't want any of the artwork to come off. So, yeah, I was trying to, like, remove it delicately, but also make sure I get the primer off. It was about 15 minutes of stress there. You can imagine that for 15 minutes, my heart pounded. <laughs> also, <laughs> we had a play argument yesterday um, about my D&D &D campaign. Because uh, right before we played, uh, I went to give her a kiss and then I said, all right. I'm off to save my do uh, my other daughter from uh, from hell because I, I have a kid in the campaign. And she's like, what? You never told me about this kid. You know, we were just having a play fight. And I was like, oh, uh, that's because I didn't have her when we got together. And she's like, what? Have you been cheating on me? I said, no. If it happened 3,000 years ago, that's 3,000 years before you and I met. It's totally that cheating. She's like, ah. Oh. But where did you get to the past from? And I said, well, first we went to the future. 
And then we went from the future to the past. And then the person I slept with there had a daughter. She said, so you and I had already met in our time. I said, babe, there is no your time, our time. There's only time. That's 3,000 years before we met. She didn't buy it. Yeah, I said that. Huh? Yeah, it's some hypothet. Not had a trouble thing. <laughs> I, I don't know. You thought it might have been sleep apnea. You were thinking it might have been sleep apnea. You know. What it might have been. I, I did. I, hands wrapped around your neck or a pillow over your head. I I did wake up unable to open my eye, but she told me it was just my allergies. <laughs> Dignanigans. Dignanigan. <laughs> Guys, if you want to send this card. No, it well hard. Uh, Y'all might want to start sending. I can say address. Mythos's wife using the multiverse. <laughs> you guys, let me know down in the comments below. Okay, if I time travel, it is technically three thousand years before we meet. Is that cheating? I don't know. I think there isn't any in my time, your time. I think there's only time. That moment. Or, or there's the other consequences. Hey, babe. What you got there? Oh, this? Yeah, yeah. What you got there? Oh, this is just my time machine. Why, uh... Why you got a time machine? Oh, you said... My wife using the multiverse excuse when I do something stupid. She would say, hmm, Brian from uh, Universe 838 wouldn't do that. <laughs> oh, my God. Sound like a Rick and Morty episode. Right. Oh, my gosh. You ever seen that Stephen He, uh, when your Asian family compares you to your cousin? Yes, I love that. <laughs> oh my god That's that hilarious. would turn into when your wife compares you to the better ver the better you from the multiverse <laughs> captain of soccer he was only He play varsity, offense and defense. <laughs> he was only ten. Yeah, you know, not just um, families. It's stereotypical, but it's panic families crap too. Yeah, dishwasher. For what? You're going to be the one to empty his trash can. In what universe? Empty his own damn trash can. What crap is that? An engineer. No, you don't. Damn engineer. I, so, actually have, I actually have common sense. 
so my parents never did that um, particular Asian stereotype. However, my grandmother, you know, your cousin Ronnie, he went to West Point, make a lot of money now. Oh, okay. good on him. That's when I go, hey. <laughs> but thankfully, uh, I mean, you know, she, now that was before. She's uh, now she just appreciates us for us. But yeah, uh, you know, oh, you know, your your cousin Tommy decided to teach himself the Thai language. He owns three clubs in Bangkok now. I mean, just they're really successful cousins and and, and my mom got the uh, same thing for a while um you know one of my aunts is a really good head for business and she's owned her own business multiple times now and she's done everything from you know she uh, had well, i think she still has her own uh kickboxing studio oh wow. authentic muay thai and uh, now she owns a wellness shop, you know, for like supplements and stuff like that. And of course, uh, it's a it's a nature sunshine um, based place too. Oh, um, but yeah, she's got her own health and wellness store, and I think she still teaches kickboxing. And... Ah, so cool! That's pretty she... cool. She got freaking uh, like hardcore washboard six pack abs. And I'm like, she's like, yeah, I'm trying to figure out a way to uh, get more people in my health and wellness store. I'm like, you just walk around and flash your abs at people. I'm sure people will, that will do it. They'll freely toss money at you to look like yeah, that. We'll do it. Yep. <laughs> How'd you get like that? Oh, I've got products at my store that'll do this. Uh, I'm there. Yeah, people just. Where do throw, I sign out? They don't even know what they're buying. They just throw fistfuls yep. of cash at her. Get up and take my money! Got a oh god! <laughs> Ask it. <laughs> I'm gonna have to do the one movie theory to the multiverse. You're gonna hunt down and kill all the other Thomases. That seems a bit extreme. A little bit. But hey, that's just a theory. A movie theory. And I have to change that last word so that way, you know, I don't have Matt Pat trying to come on here and kick my ass. Or even worse, <laughs> him just doing theories on Frosted Fist that psychologically destroy us. <laughs> Today's video, we talk about the Frost and Fist Brothers and why they're codependent. Hey, hey, that's too real. Let's stop that. <laughs> that's it right now. I watched so much Matt Pat. I used to watch a ton of it. I honestly haven't been keeping up that much with it. I will randomly watch an episode here and there. Uh, more often lately, out of his series now, I watch uh, Food Theory more than anything. But yeah, I've, I've liked his shows for a while. It's funny because for a while I refused to watch some of his film theories or movie theories. Just because I'm like, I don't like breaking movie magic. Um, I just kind of like to let movie magic be movie magic, you know? I want to know the characters as the characters, not, you know, 
I don't like to do immersion breaking things. Um, but like his game theory and stuff like that. I like those food theories I like. In fact, I never have the patience or the uh, the stones, honestly, to play through Five Nights at Freddy. So like a lot of my horror game lore and whatnot, like Five Nights and whatnot, I learned from him. Oh man, I'm gonna have to watch the one movie and lip sync. There could be only one. I think that's a, I think that's a different movie. Speaking of which, I've ordered those. I need to go back and actually watch the Highlander movies. Highlander. Oh well, no, I think I still need to get the movie. I got the series. Oh, I think my in-laws got me one and two, so now I just need to get three and four. I don't even remember three. I remember liking four, though, because it merged together the storylines of Duncan McLeod and, and uh, Connor McLeod. The, uh, the TV series and, of course, Christopher Lambert. Oh, I do remember three. I remember liking three because Sean Connery comes back. Spoiler alert. Pretty sure Highlander is one of the things that got me into eventually later on in life studying the sword. So as some of you know, um, or some of you may not know, in Houston, we actually ha uh, have a couple of playtesters for some of the new stuff. And uh, I happen to lay eyes on... A butt. A butt. No. Oh. Uh... Oh shit. Uh, on a uh, one of the new uh, Kratos tanks. It's so gorgeous in person, guys. And new Kratos is thebomb.com. You say thebomb.com? The bomb. Oh shit. Dot com. I'm looking it up. Oh, you never heard that expression before? Never. Never Got heard it. such a thing. The bomb.com. I don't believe such a website exists. I'm pretty sure it's only a saying because it rhymes. <laughs> um Yes, it rhymes, but not everything that rhymes saying. But I think this came to be a saying because it rhymes, is what I'm saying. Come on, surely you guys, somebody out there has heard of the bomb.com. I have never heard of the bomb.com. I mean, I assume I'd get my ass kicked if I said something like that. The bomb.com. No, I get tased. Hey, have you heard of bomb.com? Oh, God! Just a question. Why well, went all Seinfeld there? Is what? Bitty Spires, man. I watched the show a lot. Uh, also, Queen doing the soundtrack was fire. Heck yeah. I only dislike movie too. A lot of people did. That's why I think the version I have is the director's cut where... 
they change it up a little bit and makes it a little more tolerable. Look at this carapace, brother. No, there we oh, go. Oh, wow. Isn't that pretty? See, I really am happy with how these soft black highlights have come out. Dude, that looks fantastic. Thank you. Oh, man, dude. That's badass re-overload, man. Director's cut made more sense, but was still, eh. Yeah. Well, I now officially have all of the armor panels that are not on the skeleton done. Very nice. Oh, I was mistaken. I have not oil washed the sucker yet. Check out how vibrant this uh, plasma, I mean, a laser, it's a laser, it's a sword and a laser cannon at the same time. Thank you. Killy wants to know how many Hawk Shroud Knights for Kaz. I have one currently. And two more packaged up, uh, uh, yeah, yet to be yes. assembled, right? Yes, yes. So he's got a total of three. Just uh, one's ready to go and kick yeah, out. Yeah, one's. I don't know why I'm stressing about this. I'm like, man, there's so many details here to paint. On this chassis, I feel like I'm going to be working on it forever. But why? Once the armor panels go on, very little of this chassis is going to be seen. Why am I stressing about it? You have no idea how badly oh. I just want to... Tell him hi for us, please. Two versus one, y'all. The household of the blood tithe. Oh, yeah, because I have um, six knights. Freak's got three, so I yeah. could just drop one of mine. Because yeah. you have eight knights. So, hey, yeah. Hey, Thomas, tell, tell him to come take a look. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull the um, – I'm going to get it off the shelf real quick so we can, I can show it to him, okay? Ooh. Special little showcase. Thirty-five hundred. That's a hundred, as in H U N N I T. All right, let me. Uh... It's dusty. It's been sitting up there. I gotta blow it out. But this is the bad boy right here. This was a lot of fun to, and it, it was a lot of fun to to, to put together and, and actually to paint more than anything. Yeah, it is so dusty. It's been sitting there such a while. I gotta definitely blow it out. It's gorgeous, though. Yeah, it needs. 
be clean. Cobwebs. Wow, that's sad. Yeah. Oh, uh, this week I finally bit the bullet and just glued that missile turret on top down. Oh, you did? Yeah, I was tired of the the, the magnet being so wild. Right. So. Sent. Yeah, let me bring. It. There we go. Let me see it better. This is this pipe is actually a um uh it's a printed 3D printed, and I went ahead and kind of try to turn it as much as rust as I could. Um. Kind of see what that little guy is right there. Yeah, yeah screw that guy. <laughs> That's awesome. Back of him. Oh, yeah, more cobwebs. Ah, uh, dog, that's sad, man. Oh, I gotta clean him up. Yeah. But, yeah, I, this was a, such a cool, because I love mechs. I've, uh, oh my gosh, I've always... I used to play mech, uh, play mech warriors like crazy, and this just reminded me so much of one. Uh, yeah, this is pretty freaking cool. Well, dude, after tomorrow, I can let you know how good it is playing knights as an army. Definitely, man. Oh, also, they brought back rules um, to make it easier to take your knight as an ally now. Yeah, that's awesome. Don't you remember like before it was like yeah, it would negate all your mm -hmm. your imperial fist rules if you took them as an ally. Yep. Now uh, they're making it kind of like taking an assassin, where it's not going to hinder those rules. Well, the crazy thing about it—that's how they were in in lore. I mean, the fluff yeah, they were always yeah. they were always you know they're always there specifically for you know a, yeah. a certain army. So. Yeah, backing up the rest of yeah you know, the imperial forces. Yeah, exactly. Here. Another thing I got to clean tomorrow. Kelly is drooling and saying, ooh, ooh, he wants one like that. Kelly's such an awesome guy. Oh. Saying, who drew <laughs> like that? <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> yeah, that's a nice old badass uh, model, man. I wish I could find where I put the little banner that Brother Richard made me of a Frost and Fist banner. Like you've got that Imperial Fist banner hanging down between mm -hmm. his ties. I have one Brother Richard printed for me somewhere. I can find it. Because I would love to put that Frost and Fist banner hanging down from my um, Atropos here. How goes the Leviathan? So far, so good. Um, yeah, he's. I uh, just put down a lot of the uh, the black on it. Oh man, I can't see. Oh. Go so. And that black is instantly providing that nice contrast. Definitely. Uh, there's some of the gaps I put all over this. Thing. Eyes are dumb. I wish I were better at painting them. Mine always look like that meme we've all seen. 
honestly, like the most I do nowadays is just do the whites of the eyes. And sometimes I just shade in the eyes and fake it. Most of the time I shade in the eyes and fake it. Uh, Freak actually airbrushes his eyes. In. <laughs> no, I it's don't. <laughs> when he does the pupil, that's really <laughs> so funny. What the hell you say? Anonymous. Voice mail from unknown. Unknown. Oh yeah, I got one of those earlier. Huh? I got one of those earlier. Yeah. Saying that um, your credit card has been, you know, uh, deactivated. Please press one to reactivate your card. Right. Really? That's all I got to do, man. All right. Get some guy. Hello, thank you for calling. This is uh, John with uh, security support. And um, can you please tell me the card number? Oh, uh, you will have to tell me your card number or I can't help you. Okay. And so many of those scams out there is ridiculous. Ridiculous. Wait, you're saying that was a scam? Uh, unrelated. I have to make a phone call real quick. <laughs> Hey, hey, Killian Eli got his own screen name. Says that's awesome. One of my favorite things about orc eyes is just a dot of color, and you're gonna go, Oh, yeah. And orcs have n nice wide slits for their eyes that you can just those I actually enjoy doing. I always start with like a really, really bright silver to make it pop. Uh, and then um, put in whatever color. Um, sometimes I do red-eyed orcs. Sometimes I do yellow-eyed orcs. And just that extra color just makes it pop so nicely. Speaking of, I'm going to be taking a break from uh, doing a little yellow, and i got to work on my orc box. Ooh. Yes, sir. Painting a little green. Break stuff up. Yeah. And we'll be doing... Um, so you'll be doing some orcs, and we'll be doing some heresy stuff here in a little Hell bit. Oh yeah, man. That's so cool. We got so much. Yeah. So the main thing is I want to have an army that uh, my son-in-law can actually start playing. Oh. And uh, that way he can, you know, get his feet with. Because he's been, oh, he's been on the uh, on the Space Wolf kick hard, man. Do you have a chaplain or wolf priest for the army you gave him? Because I found... I, didn't you give one him one? Mars. I thought you gave him one. No, I gave him a Wolf Lord. Uh, ah. He was talking about how he likes Wolf Lord Crom. Right. And I was like, I have a Crom I never assembled. And right. I okay. I don't believe he does. Um, okay. Next time, I, when I come over next weekend, I'll, okay. I'll bring you that Wolf Priest. Okay, cool. Yeah, he'll be. So I told him, you know, bring his stuff because... Treat him like a big boy this time. He's pretty excited, man. He's learning all the rules. Super stoked. Love that. Oh, okay. Uh, Oni thinks he may have put a priest in the box he gave you. I think he did. I think he freaking but did. Which kind? Hold on, let me guys. I got his box here because I'm supposed to be working on that as well. Hold on.
Yeah, he should be there for the birthday. Now this is family. <laughs> Damn wolf, and I can't believe you gave him those things. <laughs> oh, I saw one another. All primaris here. Yep. Ah, an iron priest, yeah. Iron priest. Very nice. Mm. I love Iron Priest. That'll be so good marching up with his dreadnoughts too. Oh yeah. Okay. I'll bring up that wolf priest. Huh? Cause I had gotten that uh I had gotten one as a gift. Um but I uh This was the warlord that you gave him? Yeah, the Wolf Lord. Okay. Wolf Lord Crom. Oh, yeah, there's a. And his head should be in a little baggy. Okay, in a bag. I see it, yeah. I paint that one first for him. Just be gentle, because Crom comes in fine cast. He's not in plastic. Ugh. <laughs> Got this pot for years. You decapitated Crom Mythos? Uh, I don't know if I decapitated so much as never glued it on to begin with. It's just so much easier to paint a face. Not decapitating on is a strong word. <laughs> it may, may, maybe just a little bit. How do you decapitate someone a little bit? Just a little bit. <laughs> it's a little. It'll be. have his head no more <laughs> welcome to earth what great advice do you aliens bring us you intelligent life forms from uh, outer space finish painting your minis before you buy new ones <laughs> shows a soldier throwing the uh, alien back on the UFO get out of here get out fool of here. get out of here what's wrong with you So, what I'm supposed to be doing after these nights, because I'm on my last night for the army, what I should do is go back and finish the custodies because they are a small army that can be wrapped up quickly. There it goes. What I might do, <laughs> I have three, I have 10 heresy Mark III armors, and I'm like, I could go ahead and start putting together my first Blood Angels. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe just a couple for a test scheme, you know, just a test. Freak, get chatty with the beautiful people. I'll be right back. I'm going to go grab my airbrush. All right. Be careful, man. It's a long journey. Long journey out there. Getting your airbrush over there. Some coffee while you're at it. Oh, what's happening? Uh, so, what projects are you guys working on? What might you be um, putting together or pork chopping? Those loves pork chops. I love pork chops. Um, yeah, I think once I'm done with this guy, Leviathan, I don't know if I have any other stuff that I need to fix, but it's going to be working on my son-in-law's, um, wolves, the space wolves, and starting to work a little bit on those, um, on those orcs. 
because that box has been sitting there for way too long and I got to do something, but something with it. I also have to start working on that stupid challenge that uh, Oni threw down on me. That stupid gauntlet challenge. Oh yeah, there's that. Great. Oh. Have this guy here to put together. Where's he at? Grant Land Raider on top of him, didn't I? Guy right here. So I want to start on this guy as well. Definitely gonna stretch my um, <clears throat> my uh, my abilities because that's that's a lot of skin tone. That's like textures. It's all kinds of stuff that I'm probably gonna fail miserably. Oh. Um, uh, modeling for advantage. Evening, all evening, brother Kaiser. How are you? Else the nation dug out my heresy bits and now assembling Mark threes and fours for Alpha Legion, Salamanders, and White Scars. That's totally freaking cool. Misadventures, Mister. Uh, the misadventures, of Mister. Fish. Finished up some big mechs and close to finishing all my orcs. Dude, very nice. Nineteen models left as well. There's one kit bash. Uh, project because no way I'm paying 150 bucks for a squig. I I I'm, dude, that's ridiculous. I mean, we balls on a budget. Um, Bob Evans says nice. Can't wait, freak. Right on, man. Uh, did they come back from Isla's? He, is he on the mothership with his own people? I think so, but I don't know. Uh, they have a tendency to send them back. I don't know why. I mean. It did that same thing to me. I was like, hey, I, I want to hang out with you guys. And no, uh, you're just, just a weird bird. Just go ahead back on. Go ahead on. Go. So. Oh. So. Oh, man. Oh yeah, I've been actually doing a lot of hobbying lately, which is something totally different than I've been done. Gosh, I've been man, I, I've been out of it for a good probably a good year. About a good year. I had nothing to, to offer, nothing to say, you know. Every time Ethos would say, Hey man, what you got for a pork chop? <laughs> nothing. Not a freaking thing. How bad things were. I was so in a slump. Not feeling any desire to paint anything. Just like, nah. I'll play a video game. You know. Don't even bother with anything. I want to paint a thing, man. I mean, I'd get the urge. Like, I'll be at work. And I'm thinking, you know what? It'd be cool to just... just um, You know, I get the urge at work to paint, you know? But when I get home, I'm like, man, I don't feel like painting crap. You know? Play a video game. But uh, no, nah, man, I've been I've been hashing at it. Just, um, you know, just dropping paint here and there, putting some stuff together here and there. Just enjoying it, man. Something I haven't done, and like I said, about a year since I moved, actually. So, been it's recent. so good to see you see you back at it, Jim. Yeah, man, it's it's nice. I'm I'm like I said, I'm enjoying it. Just yeah, man, that was a, that was a terrible slump. Ugh. That was horrible, man. Um, Elstonation says, "Dug out my heresy bits." Not I read assembling. it. No, oh, okay. Well, that's cool. As, are those going to be proper heresy, or are they going to be primaries? Inquiring minds want to know. <laughs> or a friend. Uh, one kit bash, so he can do a. Uh, on the cheap, hobby, squ yep. uh, hobby squig off. That's cool. Yeah, man. I, I mean, yeah, it's ridiculous the cost of that stuff. So yeah, sometimes you just gotta do it on the cheap, baby. Yeah. What's wrong with that, plus, man? Plus, I've come to find that I've, I've in doing some of these conversions. Not only am I saving a buck, but some of the, the conversions just turn out to be extremely fun. Mm -hmm. You know, and you, when you bring them to life, bring your creative ideas. Put your own twist and take on it. Don't blink. 
I mean, you know, like, it's Truth. just worth it. Truth? Truth, man. I forgot to filter the black on the legs here. Doing that real quick. Had to run and get my airbrush for it. I did. I achieved the soft. Oh, shit. Not the thumbprint. Oh, no, not the thumbprint. I achieved the soft black on this, these airbrush pieces by um, doing like five, six parts medium and just like a, a half drop of black Templar. Uh, well, first I did black and then I did like a really strong kind of uh, white highlight uh, with the white ink. And then I went back and filtered it with uh, just some very, very, very thin um, black Templar. And I think it's given like a very soft, nice highlight. It may not show up all that great on camera, but I know it's there, David. <laughs> <laughs> Don't touch me! Judging intensifies. Ah. <laughs> Good to see you, Kaiser, my brother. Is he on the mothership with his own people? I try to explain to him that no, they they will send him back. He'll be back. <laughs> yeah. They always send him back. Send him back. They did me. The problem that I haven't had since they abducted me is I just, you know, just feeling kind of odd down there. As well said, I feel so used. They just show me up, do their pro, their probing for science, and then they leave. Yeah. I mean, buy me dinner. Do you ever see the episode of Supernatural with um, alien abductions? I, 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 I watched a lot of it. No, I, that one sticks out of my mind because, I mean, it's got a very strong X Files vibe as opposed oh, to the yeah. usual supernatural vibe. Yeah. And at one point, they're like, it turns out to be the. Well, I don't know if you're ever going to see it. You've watched a lot of supernatural, though. Yeah. I think you're past Ryan. Um,. But yeah, so the 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 aliens turn out to actually be faithful, and when they abduct people, uh, they're um, taking um, offerings to uh, service the fairy prince, the prince of fay, and um, or the king of fay, <laughs> and. Uh, Deed had gotten abducted by the quote unquote aliens at one point. And so uh, they're, they're interviewing a lady as um, they're interviewing a lady. And she's the one who's like, ah, yes, the little folk come and they take offerings uh, in serve uh, to uh, fulfill the desires and service the fairy king. And Sam's like, <clears throat> Dean, <laughs> did you, did you service the fairy king? Dean? <laughs> Dean gets up and he goes, he a, a swig of whiskey. Oh off my god! <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> oh my god! <clears throat> uh, trolley brothers are trolley. Yes. Did you handsome fellows try a kill team yet? We did not, unfortunately. We thought about it and decided to try Age of Sigmar instead. Indeed. We ended up really loving it. Yes. Um, and then we thought about it again. 
and then suddenly we're on this heresy hype. I, I, so now we plan on learning heresy. So what I'm saying is, is uh, we had good intentions. <laughs> ah, that's why I can't find the red. The red is on the table. What's um, really cool is that because um, Freak has decided to go crazy. Uh, yes, uh, because Freak decided to go Imperial Fist for 30k, it's actually not only is he going to be able to use his um, Primark that he has all boxed up somewhere, but he is going. The you'll notice that he's actually added a few 30k models to his 40k army recently. His Sakarin, and now he's working on the Levi Contemptor. He's also got a Contemptor, absolutely. And so those are going to be able to pull double duty. So I mean, he really just needs some infantry now, and he's got at least a. Uh, Good 750 playable force. Yes, sir. Uh, what did you think of AOS then, or did you just buy the starter set and shove the spruce on top of the pile of shame? Actually, no, we um we ended up with uh, some pre-painted armies, so they're definitely not uh, in the pile of shame. Uh, we did uh, one kind of like learning game. It was kind of where, well, it was two back-to-back -back games. Brother Oni played each of us, and we all sat down and yes. spent a couple hours kind of going over the rule book, yep. interpreting it as best as we could, watching a couple demo videos. And that was kind of our, our demonstration games. Uh, give, give credit where credit is due for sure. Brother Oni kind of really helped us go through yeah. that door. You know, he was so instrumental in uh, helping us out. At least, I mean, and I don't think we got the, the, the rules right, but at least, you know, for the most part, we were we were enjoying it, you know, and I'm sure the next time we play, we'll get them, we'll get them a little better. But, yeah, yeah man, I, I really enjoyed it. I, I really liked it. We were all kind of just interpreting straight out of the book that first game yeah. since then Oni has uh played at his uh local hobby store a few times yeah. now and had some some uh veterans to the game walk him through the game oh. and so now we have an even better idea or actually we'll be led by him who now has a better idea oh, man. The next time we play it but the differences between um, that and 40k, we made sure to watch videos on like if you're used to 40k, what are the differences we need to watch out for, and we kind of really kept worked on keeping that kind of at the forefront of our minds. Um, however, because of the similarities that are there, it was a little easier for us to pick up the rules and kind of understand them. The biggest thing we had with was their command point kind of system. That was right. the biggest difficulty, but overall really enjoyed how the game went uh, i know a lot of people don't like the system or the format um of age of sigmar and i know a lot of that has to do with nostalgia factor and people don't like it because it's not the warhammer fantasy that they're familiar with right uh but however like i said freak and i are brand new well i keep saying we're brand new we're about six years in the hobby now so aos but, but we knew to that system now. though yeah yeah and so you know we we have no nostalgia uh, for what came before. And so right, no reference for people who just played uh, 40k and are jumping over. Yeah, we really enjoyed it. Yeah, I, I like it. 
and I have an unboxing I need to finish. Um, of a brilliant army that I have. Fantastic, phenomenal, amazingly gorgeous army uh, that I'll be playing in uh, Age of Sigmar. It is incredible. And that is going to be my main army. And it's going to be just such a pleasure to play. Whether I win or lose. Yes, I do have a pretty sweet AOS RV. That's exactly what I was... <laughs> I fell out of the of course. I was wondering where the punchline was going to come. Um, yeah, so the unboxing, I have to show everyone. Well, yeah, I don't know if I should just wait to for them to see the clip, because it's not what I expect. It is not what I expect. But for the centerpiece to my AOS army, I play Stormcast Eternals. And I saw that Elstination had a, a gorgeous, incredible, phenomenal Star Drake. All done up in an Asian theme. Hey, I'm Asian. That sounds like something I'd love to get my hands on. Asian theme Star Drake. And I said, I have to have that as the centerpiece. Um for my army but what i ended up getting was not what i expected uh so i i really need to finish up editing that um unboxing because it is a game changer it is a game changer you're a game changer your face is a game changer. <gasps> You think you know a guy. You think you know a guy. I don't know anybody. You know me. Well, I know you. You know I'm down with OPP. Yeah, you know me. <laughs> I do not want to paint those. I have to. Ugh. I am super excited for my drums. <laughs> do you uh, want to? Sh I th oh yeah, I think you already shared with the class. What inspired this uh, this uh, desire to master the drums? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, some of them I remember. But yeah, my son-in-law decides he's like he tells me, "Hey, yeah, man, I want to pick up the drums," and uh, so he buys himself a kit, right? And it's similar to the the kit that Nina Chick has, and and he's like, "Yeah, I'm gonna do this so I can learn to play the drums, and I can play drums at church, and I can play playing drums in general." I was like, "All right, good." For a while, I hadn't heard none. Right? Not like he's doing a whole lot. So then, you know, Nina Chick wound up getting a set, and then I started playing them, and I'm like, oh, man, this is something I've been wanting to do when I was a kid. I was. It's funny, because I called my brother. Uh, really a nostalgic moment. I called my brother, and I said, hey, do you remember when we were kids? And I thought, I remember how old I was. I, know, I remember that when um, the song Money for Nothing came out by dire straits you know and uh man that was that was like the song for us that was like the coolest freaking song it had such a great guitar and drum um parts on it i'm like i mean when we were kids when we were little we would sit there and pretend to know how to drum that and here i thought you know I, i'm a kid i was like yeah this is how you do it man this is how you drum this <laughs> stupid kid right but it, it uh, you know, we were on the floor pretending like we were drumming, you know, uh, to that song. And, uh, oh, man, that was just so much fun. Well, um, 
I got on the set, and for the first time, I actually got to play along with that song. I played the uh, the drumless track of that song, and it was like, oh my gosh, this is like, you know, friggin' bucket list dream come true kind of thing. You know, I always wanted to play behind that song, you know, because it's such a fun song to do. And uh, I called him. I was like, hey, man, you remember when we did this? He's like, and he hung up on me. No. <laughs> <clears throat> But yeah, it's little things like that kind of, you know, kind of make it, yeah. So. It's funny to have those little childhood fantasies and dreams and stuff. And when, when you get an opportunity to kind of do something, you know, remotely close to what you would you know you always dreamt as a kid it's kind of fulfilling oh heck yeah it's inspiring man yeah so i anyway so i decided i was like you know what i am going to learn to play the drums within 90 days um Gonna master it and best at it. So I've been playing a lot, uh, like a lot. So the beginning of the month of June was the, the actual start of the challenge. So by the end of August, I should be somewhat accomplished, hopefully. Out of um, curiosity, because I, I I know a little how your brain works and. Yep. You're a planner, you're an organizer, you're a quantifier, right? Oh, I don't know about all that. So what is your plan to quantify mastering the drums? What to you will say you've mastered the drums in 90 days? Like what would be, how, like how can I quantify it? Like how would be, what, what would be the... <clears throat> the thing that would say to you that you've mastered the drums? <clears throat> Being able to play just about, well... Not every not, not not every drummer knows how to play every song. There's so many so many songs out there with an amazing sure. technique and all that. But to be able to play a good you know 75 percent of the music that's out there, especially music that I I I, uh, I come in contact with on a day on you know on a weekly basis. You know, uh, some of my favorite stuff like you know old rock rock uh, legendary songs. You know, uh, old Guns and Roses. You know, like I said. Uh, Dire Straits, you know, big hair band uh, songs. Uh, one song that I really wanted that I thought, man, this is such a great, great song. Uh, smells like Teen Spirit, right? Everybody's heard of it, and it's such a great Nirvana uh, song. Um, and I, I actually, you know, kind of listened to it and played it in my head. So <clears throat> I think in a week or so I'll be able to master it. It's not, it's not a hard song. Uh, I already have the beat down. I just have to, you know, put it onto uh, onto the drums. So it, it to be able to do that, you know, and say, hey, you know, I can listen to something and then play it. That that would be the uh, the culmination of saying, hey, okay, I think I've got, I've arrived. You know, here's the thing. <clears throat> I'm not going to say I have learned to play the drums until I've learned to keep perfect timing, and that's one of the biggest issues. I can keep perfect timing on the keyboard. I have no problem with that. I've got perfect, perfect timing, and I like I'll know the song, and I keep the timing in my head, or I'll you know tap it out on my foot, and I won't deviate. Never have a problem. But when you're actually doing it, when you're doing a physical action uh, with a drum kit, um, you know it, you you're literally putting that effort and making sure that your limbs, every limb, is doing you know the same. Well, keeping that same timing, regardless of what you know. Uh, what pieces you're hitting and uh so that's you know that's that's the main thing is to be able to know that i, I can keep timing and my fill whatever fills you know um uh, that i do um uh, that they sound good and they still keep timing along you know don't want to yeah keep timing also do a fill and it just you know throws the whole measure off you know so that's the kind of thing that i i and something you and I talked about offline that kind of gives you a little bit of an edge is that um, you being in uh, P 
piano, you're already kind of accustomed to something that throws a lot of new drummers <coughs> off the ability to do, you know, divergent things with both hands. Right. Right. And, and the thing is, I'm, and again, I, I, and I tell people this, I'm not, I'm not like, you know, normal piano players, normal piano players, you know, they're, most of them, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're trained, uh, properly trained, mind you, I'm not properly trained. Uh, I'm all self-taught, um, and they pretty much rely on, you know, the signature in their head, um, and they rely on their own, on their own rhythm. Me, I rely solely wholeheartedly on the drums and the bass. So when I'm playing, when I'm actually playing a gig or playing with, with a, a band, I always have the bass and a drum in my ears because I use uh, in-ear monitors. <clears throat> so I have them completely cranked up because I man that that rhythm allows me to be able to do things on the keyboard you know that you know kind of frees me up opens a lot of pockets and because I understand drum logic um, it helps me to lock on with the drummer and be able to um, you know do a kind of a lot of cool syncopated stuff with the drummer um, and we have a lot of fun doing that you know so once they hear you know that I'm doing things. You know, doing little things that the drummer will pick up, and he'll look at me, and all of a sudden we're like, we're going off. You know, we're we're gonna have some fun with that. Um, and that's something I've always, I've always enjoyed. Real, real good drummers is really that's that's when you know he's a good drummer because he'll pick up on certain nuances that I'll do, and he'll turn around and look at me like, oh, I know where you're going, and then that's it. You know, we're we're just having a good time, man. We're doing stuff that, and the bass player was like, oh, I see what y'all doing, okay, and then they just. You know, it's it's on. It's it's a lot of fun. So, so yeah, I, I'm more uh, I'm more um, rhythm driven, and um, and so it's easy for me to be able to pick up a lot of you know a lot of that. Um, the 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 challenge is the coordination. I'm coordinated. I I I'm coordinated playing two different things with two limbs, right? Playing the piano, the bass, and the treble. But when you're playing the drums, man, you're playing, you're using four limbs. You know, you got your kick, you got your hi hat, and then you got, you know, your snare, and then you know you got your 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 uh, uh, your cymbals and your toms and all that. And so it's um, putting all that together and making it sound good. That's the challenge. You know, that's I can say is going to be the challenge. Just so I can. I want to master that. I want to be able to be flawless, you know. I want to be able to listen to a song and say, okay, I can play it and I can master it. So, Me uh, mentioning that I ordered a dragon from Elsa Nation and what I got is not what I expected. Uh, Elsa Nation warns the chat. I promise I didn't send a turd in a box. <laughs> Thank you for no, no, that came to me. I, I cherish it for always. It's Elsa Nation's turd. Come on, man. Uh, Lars, my brother, good to see you. I'm looking forward to hanging out with you tomorrow. Marcos Castellanos, wah! He's packing up his army for a game on Sunday. Ooh, That's awesome. Yeah, Actually, man. More picks, man. I'm actually, um, we'll be packing up tonight for my game tomorrow, so I'm excited. Yeah, make sure you send me picks, man. Don't don't leave me out of the whole thing here. Oh, definitely. We'll keep you updated the whole day. Sweet. Uh, Oni, he's really thinking about getting his bass guitar again. Really misses it. You should, man. You freaking should. Marco says, I didn't know you were a drummer freak. I'm a drummer, too. I just started. I just started playing. Um, so, and I ordered um, I ordered uh, an electronic uh, drum kit. It's the uh, Elisis Command, uh, which is a better, the better. So what I've been playing around with when I, when I started at the beginning of this month is the Elisis, Elisis um, Surge Mesh kit my daughter got. And uh, it's a lot of fun. It sounds pretty decent, uh, but I wanted to get um, I wanted to get the professional uh, version of it, uh, which is the well, it's a, it's getting into the professional grade of it. Uh, it's the command, and uh, it's actually the, the uh, chrome tubular frame and everything. So it's gonna be a little more sturdy and have a hell of a lot more um, samples, uh, drum samples. I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty excited, man. I'm so freaking excited, right? Night warm up. See you Sunday, brother. Looking forward to the game. Uh, 
Superfly says, I'm not musically inclined. I was elected band manager in middle school. Band manager? <laughs> hey, you're part of the band, bro. Oh, this yeah. freaking moth. Get out of here. Go on. Uh, Fish says, closest thing to a music instrument I can play is on rock band. Hey, brother, I am down, okay? I can't play a real musical instrument for shit. But <laughs> uh, we used to do... Uh, Guitar Hero and Rock Band Nights all the time. That's still, uh, still counts, baby. Still counts. Come on, buddy. Go. I, I don't know why is it. I I have a hard time killing moths, but they're such annoying. Go. Oh, go. It's oh. fun to have a good rhythm section. I played set in a jazz band. Night. Really? Who's that? Marcos said that. Marcos. Yeah, that's awesome, dude. Um. Let me tell you something. I started dipping my toe a little bit just listening to jazz. Um, that's the cool thing about the kit that I'm ordering. It also has the brushes uh, sound to it. Um, man, that I think is probably one of the most challenging uh, rhythms to do. Um, you know, because it's oh man, it, it's it's. <laughs> if you listen to, to drums uh, with uh, in jazz, it's 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 a thing in itself, man. It's crazy. Lars says, yeah, Guitar Hero hasn't translated into actual skill for me yet either. I mean, that's fair, but on the other hand, oh, man, you get together with some friends, and those are still some good memories. That's man. a lot of fun. I need my hooge. It's just on the other side of the monitor. Uh, yeah, that's so... It, it's... It, yeah. And like I said, I've, I'm I'm comfortable on the keyboard. I wouldn't say I'm a master at it, but I'm pretty comfortable around it. Um, I've been doing it for for 20 plus years, and uh, so I'm, I can pretty much play just about any style. And bucket list was definitely drums, uh, drums and bass. So the th funny part is, if you listen to this tune here, turn it up. Funny, the drums on this on this piece here. The, I wrote this. This is mine, and so <laughs> the drums are all on a keyboard. <laughs> this I actually did this on my keyboard. Uh, I found I found a decent drum sounding kit, and I layered all these drum pieces together. You know, because I, I I like I said I know what what a kit such uh, what a good you know beat should sound like at least. And uh, so I did all this, you know, try to keep it timing and everything. So I did all that through the keyboard. But I, I, I want to continue to do recording again, and I really don't want to do that again with, because I will either use loops or I'll do that with the keyboard. And it's like, uh, I don't know, it's not the same, right? And. Uh, so I, I want to be able to do it on the kit, you know, on the drums. Um, body is the nose you can pick. <laughs> Mr. Fish, did you know that the most musical instrument in the in the human body is the nose? You can pick it and blow it. Hell yeah, man! That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Especially those damn uh, rodeo boogers, because they hang on like a cowboy. You know what I mean? <laughs> but yeah, yeah, a lot of the music that that you hear on here is stuff that I wrote, um, that I've written, and like that one in particular. Like I said, it's all. I mean, I, the guitar I actually did it myself. It's a real guitar. I mean, I got guitar sitting there in the back, uh, but. Bass, I laid it on the keyboard, and the drums, I did it on the keyboard on that one. There's some that I've done it with loops, and it just sounds horrible. So, there you go. It's a little bit in the freak's world. <clears throat> I mean, 
that that beat doesn't sound too bad actually. I was like, I'm like, okay, that's actually pretty cool. I'm listening to the, I'm 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 listening to the beats, and there's there's a little bit of flam there, not a lot because you can't do really a whole lot of flam with you know a key. But yeah. It's funny though when you know I never really was big into drums, you know, until like actually until like until I became excited about it. it. Must be my it, I'm turning fifty this this month, guys. So this is probably my <laughs> my uh, my uh, my my, uh, my crisis, right? <laughs> my midlife crisis. Um, so now, like, I want to master that. You know, I'm I'm learning two languages too. I'm actually. Uh, uh, learning uh, Japanese and I'm learning Portuguese, um, and so yeah, I mean, and my my brain's just going nuts. Um, but yeah, it's like you know, I never really listened to drums a whole lot. There's a lot of technique. There's you know, Marcos, you know what I'm talking about. You know, when you're you know, when you're listening to listening to a song, you, you're you're listening. You're not just listening to the song. You're listening to the the technique. You're listening to the rhythm. You're listening to the, you know, the passion of the drummer and all that stuff. And you're like, holy crap, you know, uh, and you want to replicate it. Yeah, it wasn't until I started started playing the drums that I'm actually hearing the drums. You know, having that same thing. It's like when you you buy a car, you know, and you you start noticing more of that same car everywhere else, kind of thing. You know. I'm like that with keyboards. If I listen to, I'm, I'm you know, listen to a piece and it's got keys in it, I'm like, okay, let me listen to this. I'm listening to every part of the keys. I don't know if I want to paint those vents. Ah, so in this in a sample video or a sample image that I'm using to to do this guy, the black has highlights that's done the, like a light blue, oh, sort of light blue bluish highlights for the black that's painted. And ah, man, I can try to do that, but I'm so scared of getting it on. Unless, unless that blue gets on that orange or that yellow, that's, that's not coming off. I'm not sure if that's a really good idea to do. I mean, I can try maybe dry brushing it. Probably dry brushing it. Maybe. 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 Might be able to pull that off. Love the way the airbrush looks. Uh... Don't know. I don't know. Ah, oh, shit. How long have I been talking to myself? God damn it. I was wondering why you were so quiet. Marco says, uh, I only play hand drums now. I don't have enough room for my drum set in my house right now. Uh, I love watching drummers play because you can't always tell exactly what they are doing just by listening. You know, this is true. Yeah, no, you're right. You're 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 right about that. Um, so there's there's a website or a, not a website. There's a um, um, there's a channel that I watch that I've been really really studying under. It's called Drumio, and uh, you probably have heard of it. You can just type it in YouTube. It's called Drumio. D R U M E O. And, you know, they have these, it's pretty cool because it's like free lessons and stuff. And they'll show you all what, what the drummers are doing and they'll, they'll even do covers and they'll show you how they're done. It, it's really, really cool. Um, and, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really loving that. And you can actually see the, their, their pedal work, <clears throat> you know, as well as, you know, the, the work with, the. Uh, with a kit see my my problem is that i'm left-handed i am oh, hard left-handed 
<clears throat> and so my biggest issue is that I can't really play any kit. Um, the way I have Nina's uh, set, uh, the, her kit is uh, I've got it sort of hybrid. All I did really is just move the kick drum to the left a little bit. Um, and so that way I can kick with my with my left foot. Uh, and then the highs uh, is going to be on my right. The problem, though, is that everything else is still set up the same way. And, I mean, I play open-handed, you know, uh, but when I got to go to the ride, I'm crossing over my shoulder, and I'm like, oh, God, so I'm doing this over here while I'm trying to, you know, hit the uh, hit the, the snare, and that's, <laughs> that's just not going to work. So when I get my kit, I'm going to pretty much set it up completely left-handed. I'm just basically the whole reverse of what a right-handed kit will do or will be will be like, so... Um, and I think once once I get that, I'll be it'll be a little more ergonomic for me, and I won't hurt myself because uh, like I'll notice my shoulder will be hurting a little bit, you know. But that's it, a hell of a workout. I didn't realize it. Honestly, I didn't realize how much of a workout it was uh, to play the drums. It was one of those things where I'm like, oh man, it. I know it was a lot of energy. I know a lot a lot of drummers they really put it all in it when they're playing. But, you know, I didn't realize how much, you know, until I actually started, you know, trying to work that out, man. It's like, good Lord. So funny, I was talking to my wife. I said, you know what? It's kind of interesting because I don't see a whole lot of fat drummers. I mean, they're out there, the big guys. They're amazing. But for the most, top, most part, a lot of these drummers are, are pretty thin. <laughs> they're pretty thin, you know. So... I don't know, but it's great exercise for sure. And I, uh, I always close, I always close rings on my, uh, <laughs> on my Apple Watch. So it's a lot of fun. That's cool to know that you were a drummer, man. That's pretty neat. I want to get Oni to get back into his music, man, because, uh, you know, he's actually, he's actually pretty decent. He plays the bass. Yeah. If he can get his bass back and come over here and we'll we'll jam out a little bit. Um is it I have to find it. This one? That one? I'll delete it. Yeah, this sucked. This was done on all keyboard. Keyboard and loops. Ugh. That's embarrassing. You can always have a hi hat and a ride on the left. Yeah, I, I, and that's that's what I'm planning to do. Uh, I'm gonna have actually I'm gonna have the 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 ride's gonna be on the left, hi hat's gonna be on my right. You know, which again, it's gonna be the total opposite of the right hander's drum set is. I'm going to paint those missiles. Damn it. Yeah, I'm gonna make it make it pop. I need a little little red in my life. <clears throat> Uh, let's see. We'll pop a red. Do -do -do. Oh, so my neighbor. That's, that's another reason I was kind of we were late. 
he calls me over. He said, "Hey, you got a second? I need to talk to you." I'm like, "Oh, okay. I don't know. You know, he, some was he's a serious guy most of the time." And I'm like, "Oh man, I guess that's something he needs to talk to." So I, so I drag my wife, and we will go next door. I'm like, "Is everything okay?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes, uh, "Um, you know, he starts chit chatting and say, hey, man, I, yeah, you know, I, I don't mind chatting, but I gotta, you know, I've got a, I got a live stream I need to get get to." So, oh yeah, no problem, man. He goes. Yeah, check this out. He's really big into Star, into uh, Battle, uh, Battle Star Galactica. You know, I, I loved. It. I, I used to love it when I was a kid. You know, the original, um, the TV show. And so he shows, and I'm, and I kind of see something on his table, on his little, um, on his table. I'm like, what the? And I noticed it was the, um, the, the one of the fighters. You know, and then of course the Raider ship. And I'm looking at him, like, I'm looking at it closely, and I noticed, like, that looks like it was FDM printed, you know? And I'm thinking, so I, I, you know, he starts telling me, and basically he wound up getting those two pieces from eBay, or buying them from eBay or something like that. And one of them he paid 12 bucks, and the other one for the Raider paid 10 or something like that. And when I look closely, I'm like, okay, so the, the, the fighter looks somewhat decent, you know, you it's... It's got its FDM, you know, fallacies, but you know, you got all the ridges and stuff, which, but the other one, oh my God, I turned it upside down and you can see just the filament just all upheaval. It was just nasty. I'm like, he charged you 10 bucks for this? Oh man, I felt so freaking bad for him because he wanted me to paint him for him. And I'm like, dude, oh, that is not paintable. Mm. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull up uh, some STLs for him, um, and and paint and actually print him decent uh, resin um, Battle Star Galactica um, fighter and raider ships, and uh, and paint them up for him, you know. That's cool. Yeah, because he he's retired. He's just got he was just retired uh, as a Houston police officer, and uh, I'm gonna uh, you know I'm gonna paint him for him in those in his colors. So I was like, no, oh, that's gonna be pretty. All right, let's get that. That's cool, man. I have a Normandy from Mass Effect. I still need to paint. That's all. Awesome. Speaking of sci-fi fandoms and 3D printed ships. Yeah, man. I'm going to break out the... Oh, good guy freak to the rescue. That's awesome. <laughs> freak, there's another musical co uh, comment that you'll probably understand better than me. Uh, You can always have a hundred mirrored left-handed like... That is how Carter uh, Branford started playing because he learned from watching people on TV. He set up his drums mirrored and like that. Branford. I mean Carter Buford from uh, um, from Dave Matthews Band. Because I know he plays open-handed also. That guy is, oh my god! I watched that guy play. And it's it's it, it's sick. It's almost like, you know, okay, no, it, it, it's Elstonation. Let, let's just give you give you a uh, reference. It's Elstonation this, okay, <laughs> you know. So, yes, yeah, okay, okay, Carter Buford, yeah, this guy. Oh my God. Oh man, if you ever watch Carter Buford play drums, I'm serious. It's it's, you know. Forget about burning your brushes. You burn your instruments. You know, you're like putting all your instruments in a pile. I don't care what you play. You're like, all right, screw you. This guy, man, he is surrounded by every imaginable percussion instrument, you know, and uh, he plays every last piece. I mean, every, every, every last. He hits. Let me tell you something. It's like, you know, mama drunk in the kitchen. Everybody gonna get hit. <laughs> you know, that that's that's yeah, that's that's Carter Buford. He he's like drunk drunk mom, you know. 
every one of those drums. You, they come in and they think, uh, they think, hey, uh, we'll be okay, man. There's too many of us. He can't hit us all. <laughs> no, no. Drum mama is going to hit everybody. Going to get hit. I'm a musician now. We've seen your band picks. <laughs> Yeah, what well, don't you play what? Picks. The bass? What did he play? What did you play, uh, Elson? But also he was saying that the other guy is the Elston nation of drums. Oh yeah. Gary Buford, man. God dog it, dude. He's And he's such a chill he's such a chill guy, man. Really, really chill guy. And but he is a Beast on the skins, bro. Holy crap. Art of freaking Buford, man. See how you were able to fish Dave Matthews Band out of that? I'd have had no idea. <laughs> Oh, you were the singer? Oh, screamer. <laughs> that's awesome. I thought he was the <clears throat> but since you were like yeah, bass, that's awesome. I was like, oh, well, I'm sure I'm wrong, because Freak, Freak would have remembered. No, uh, I, I, I didn't remember. I, uh, I always just assumed that. I was like, oh, I must be misremembered. Like, not just with you, but like just in life. No, I remember like a band pick, an old band pick or something like when Eddie showed... Um, or something like that. It, it was a while back. Uh, yeah, we got to see long-haired Elston. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, look at this. This is so cool. Look at this, Elston. Oh, yeah, man. He was a screamer, huh? Yeah, he screamer's a musician. Yeah, it is, man. Especially if you know how to do it right. I can't never do it right. Trust me, I tried. I try and get him to scream all the time. Yeah, and it just sounds annoying. Puts a something in the shape of a ball in my mouth to shut me up. And I just, I, this is not right. Yeah, he's more of a moaner. Comes out kind of creepy. Yeah, a little weird. He calls me down. And he goes, "Shh." I just saw. I just calm down. <laughs> What's happening right now? And then I just blank out. You have to drink something. Shh. It's okay. Inhale this napkin. <laughs> it reminds me of that. They go to sleep? They go to sleep. <laughs> yeah, that was so awesome. I love that. Oh, God. Doctor approved. The doctor's like, this is straight up chloroform. This is chloroform. <laughs> <laughs> Tired of your kids driving you crazy. <laughs> now, they're, what, was it, what was the name? I, I got to find out what the name of the... <laughs> uh, couple sprays in a rag and put it over his, his cry hole and he'll be asleep in minutes <laughs> or in seconds. God. See, I'm going to do first. I don't know if that's the wise choice of words. Do you remember the old go to sleep, go to sleep chloroform? Actually, that's what I'm going to do now. Chloroform <laughs> someone? <laughs> My list will be a war boss, a weird boy, 10 grots, 30, 30 mega knobs. Holy shice. Well, damn, son. Six Storm Boys and 15 Killicants. That's God. an insane list. I'm so excited to see what that does. Oh, that's going to make people walk away is what that's going to make them need. I mean, some people are going to be like, oh, that's mostly goblins and, and mega knobs. I, I don't know how to feel about this. <laughs> There's no in between. Yeah. You either have goblins or mega knobs. 
You're like, oh, so it looks like you're playing by yourself today. Okay. No, no, you said goblins are mega knobs, not Tau. Oh, okay. That's different. Gotcha. <clears throat> What's the loadout on the cans and Mega Knobs, Marcos? I feel like either way, you can't go wrong with the Mega Knobs. Now that I have the armor plates done, I so badly want to rush ahead and slap these armor plates on, <laughs> just to see the night start to come together. Yeah, I've done. I've I've been like that. Like ah, I just wanted to be done. It's not even necessarily that I want to be done. It's just you know when you're still at the pre-assemble stage, it feels like you put a lot of hours, and it doesn't look like the thing you want it to be yet. Right. You know, and it's just like, I just want to slap it together because I have I have the colors down to get past the ugly stage. So now I, I just want to see it come together. Yes. Come together. Mega, shooters and claws on the mega knobs. Cans are six shooters and six rockets and three gotsukas. Nice. Very nice, dude. Sounds like you're going to make somebody cry. Kick his ass, you bass. Kick his ass, he bash. I n neither my wife nor my kids have seen that movie, and I said that recently, and it confused everybody. And I'm like, oh, that's another one of those references only I'm going to get. Okay. <laughs> My opponent is taking Tyranid, so it'll still be a challenge. Ah, you're going against the top of the meta. That's one thing I respect about Marcos. He ain't afraid, he man. To, he likes to take fun lists and go against the top of the meta. He ain't smart. Are, are Tyranids really in the top right now? Yeah, Tyrion has been on top for about a month now, bro. Really? I did not know that. Yeah, it's, it's something we definitely didn't see coming, but no. they got the Wow. Which, I mean, you know, they've had a rough time for quite a while, so. They're bugs, dude. They're freaking insects. What the hey. But they, they are, aren't they more of a, like a horde army as well? Uh, They, are, they have two modes. Okay. They have horde army or big stompy monster army. Oh, um, between their different variations of monsters, they can very much have a imperial uh, imperial knight style army. But that's just big monsters. Oh man! I had the no thing idea. is that is if you go imperial knights as an army, you know you can't just get in a detachment of small things to take objectives. Tyranids can do that. Right. Tyranids got the horde option too, so you know you can really do some effective mixes of both. My friend is taking the big stompy monsters. Nice. Stompy, stompy. Tyranid monsters are just that. Good chopping, good shooting, a whole lot of bodies. Yep, yep. And just like an Imperial Knight, uh, the big stompy versions of the bugs are like toughness eight. Oh, but a lot, they can take wings, so they're like Imperial Knights that can fly. Uh, or some of them burrow underground in deep strike. And then they do an attack when they come out of deep strike. And you know, like normally, 
you got a deep strike nine inches away. This thing can come up right underneath you and get into close combat. Damn. Yeah. You do mortal wounds when it pops out of the ground. It's kind of like Tremors. You remember that movie? I love Tremors. Kevin Bacon at his finest. I, that, I mean, that's not saying a lot, but you know. I'm hungry. Mm, bacon. Bacon! Bacon! I want biscuits and gravy tomorrow, but I think we've used up all of our biscuits. Dude, did you know it's 11.30? Holy crap. I have just been focused on painting. Same, same. I have wonder of a snag a heavy list into your tiered in monsters. That's cool. That'd be very themey. Themey and also kind of neat because they'd get their anti-monster bonuses. <clears throat> their anti-monster bonuses aren't necessarily, you know, super powered, so not going to be a huge edge, but it would be a nice little fun and fluffy edge against Fluffy. Fluffy. Considering they're like Konami Monster Hunter meets orcs. That was dumb, Mythos. You so dumb. I painted the seal, the uh, trim on the outside of the legs before the inside of the legs. And now, because I've got fresh wet paint on the outside of the legs, oh, no. I don't really have anywhere to hold or brace uh, onto the model uh, because there's wet paint there. <laughs> you always work inside out, Mythos, not outside in. Oh yeah, let's see. Again, again. I have to do. Show up. Pretty decent. Have to clean up All those black misstroke uh, accidents that I did. Oh, that's going to turn out. That is one of the roughest things when working with inks. Misstrokes really cost you. It really gets on to that, don't it? I mean... I'm so far. It's looking good, brother. In there. Yeah, in there for sure. Slowly but surely, I just got to do his helmet, you know, do a little more details. I got to itch, itch, uh, um, itch highlight it. I think one more hobby night, he might be ready for basing. Yeah. Yeah. Turned out pretty good. I like his, uh, the uh, Lancers turned out pretty good. I'll still have to do the, uh, heat bloom a little better. Got to clean that up some and. Yeah, so far. There's going to be so much melt in your army. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Oh, yeah, it's going to be so ass. Yeah, Love good. it. I had ass indeed. Love it. As far as, well, actually, let me get the wet paint off my brush real quick. Is not safe to have. Change this blade. Uh, while we prepare to close, I need a I need a new blade for my. Oh, there. 
Come on, come on, do it. Wait. Now it doesn't want to come. Of course. Okay, so. There it goes. Here's where I've come with the legs on my knight. Oh man, it still, looks great. Still need to do the gold trim on that one. This earlier in the show, I had just the white ink on the inside of the black thigh plates. And so I filtered over it with a little bit of that thin down black to make it the uh, transition softer. I did, already did the basing. So just got to go over it with some gloss later on. Dude, looks great, dude. Thank you, brother. I'm, I've been practicing that, trying to get better. Yeah. Following great. someone's tutorial. I've uh, been working on the Laz Impulsor, I think it's called. Something like that. I've been working on that. And there's the bare chassis. Okay, so I'm going to do a couple of a piece by piece, okay? So I've got done the two shoulder blades to go here. Damn, that looks so good, man. Thank you. I think it's glowing. Huh? I've got the chest piece uh, to oh, go man. here. Kind of Iron Manish. Yeah, I kind of went. Um, you know how like Wolverine and Iceman, their body <clears throat> suits are like one color on the outside, where of the outside of their arms and legs are one color, then the inside body stripe <clears throat> color. Yeah. That's kind of what I've gone for. It's like black in the middle, so I've got a black carapace here. The the carapace is black. I've got the chest pieces black. Uh, with just a little pop of blue. Um, oh, good, man. On the outside, I'm going to have the shoulders be blue. And then a crotch plate is going to be black. And then uh, the helmet's going to be blue for just a pop in the middle. Right. But yeah, so I'm doing that kind of like two-tone scheme. And the leg plates are over there. But the leg plates, kind of like that X-Men look I was going to tell you, or I was talking about. They're going to be blue on the outside with the shoulder pads and the other parts. And they're going to be black on the other half. So that way it'll match the black of the middle. So, yeah. Dude, that looks freaking tremendous. Thank you, brother. I, I really wanted to slow it down and work on my airbrush skills for this nice big night. Especially because it's got so much blank canvas potential. That's freaking paying off. Tremors was the shiz. Even watched the awful sequels. Yeah, the sequels were awful, but worth watching. Graboids. Marcos hasn't painted his beast snags yet. I, you know, I've I freaking love the beast snag. And in fact, I've in my last couple games, I definitely voted my snaga boys uh, the MVPs over my regular boys. The way you're holding the model on screen, blur is catching it, making it look like you're doing some spicy painting. <laughs> <laughs> Happy freaking Friday, X Gear Commander. I'm sorry that you happen to catch us just as we're closing out, but I hope your weekend is kicked off in an awesome way, as I hope for all of you guys. Happy the year. Tough. Oh. After all this progress, I'm so excited to see what happens when I start bringing these pieces together. Just like Power Rangers. Let's bring them together. So after I finish this gold trim, we'll be on to two years worth of red cabling. <laughs> There's so that's one of the reasons why I'm so intimidated by this night. Got a lot of cabling on him. Yeah, the skeletons just got so many cables. Oh. And you know, being Forge World, you know, like there's just like a lot of extra detail that no one's ever going to see, but I'm going to paint yes. anyways. Yes. Like I know, like the logical side of me knows that this chest plate here is going to be. Or is going to cover up these massive 500 wires in the carapace. Am I still going to paint those wires? Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Each weapon has about 32 wires, you know, between the front and the back. They're like some of the only models that do cable loops on the inside and the outside. So it's a good thing that Richard put this together in a wide open pose. They've got cables linking 
the backs of the weapon to itself you know it's, it's a lot of good detail but it's just like going back and finding every little cable even some that are molded directly into the side of the gun it's just going to be a pain <laughs> so it's just a lot of i guarantee you there's going to be multiple instances of and i'm finally done up oh, there's another cable <laughs> and i'm finally uh, another cable but i'm excited i just it's a labor of love i'm pulling out all the stops to make my last night the best one except for of course the one that was gifted to me in the space wolf colors but like as far as the ones i'm painting this last one there's a lot of effort to make it the best one any closing thoughts from you my brother my man not a lot i'm really enjoying uh putting this stuff together you know uh the fact that this sucker is going to be on a tabletop soon yeah that's gonna be pretty badass it's right yeah there. that that is i mean from sprues to in two weeks sprues to almost done you have definitely been knocking it out yeah man so i'm pretty excited like oh gosh i'm so upset that it, it got black crap all over it man but i'm gonna try to clean that up i think i, I have a i have an idea how to do that um I'm just going to have to be really careful with the airbrush, so I'll probably just have to do a little, go back with a little bit of white, and then kind of clean it up there, and then go back with the uh, yellow, and uh, that'll cover it. So, yeah, I can okay. do it. You can do it. Do it all night long. I'm excited for us to hang out next week. Oh, man, I'm, I'm so stoked. I'm super stoked. Can't wait, dude. Tomorrow, I'm excited for my game with Atlas. Good or luck, no, no, man. Atlas, uh, Oni. Yep. Uh, you going? Knights versus Custodes. Yeah, man. Good luck. I don't know which army uh, you're playing, Lars, but uh, your first opponent will be Atlas and his Imperial Guard. What's up? And always a good time. Yeah, man, it's going to be... I can't remember the last time we got together with Lars. It was a while back, so th this is going to be a fun time. Lars, was it over there at uh, Clouds? I think that's the last time yeah, I remember I think, playing. Yeah, yeah, I think that's the last time that we we got together and hung out was uh, for my birthday, at Clouds. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's gonna be pretty cool. Wish you luck, Absolutely. man. Thank you. Um, now I'm hoping to put on a decent showing again. I literally just got my book today, so I'm still learning their abilities and stuff like that. But I'm I'm hoping, you know, to put on a good a good showing my first night time taking the night oh, you got this bro your night's gonna kick some serious ass yeah yeah i'm, I'm definitely hoping so uh and either way i feel like it's gonna be a a good good fight between the resilience of the custodies and the potential output of uh the knights of course you know you can bring six models to a fight you know, everyone that goes down is going to be painful. <laughs> oh, sure, man. It's it's swingy. Yeah. Uh, everybody, remember next week, next uh, Saturday, we are um, wishing the Freakalicious a happy birthday. We'll be celebrating. Um, I'm old. Wait, no, not next week. No, oh, next week's a, Father's Day. The well, week after that. Right. I mean, so I will be. Next week is your I, official birthday. Yes, yes, yeah. Next week is definitely my official birthday, but we're not celebrating until the twenty fifth. Probably bringing sisters. Cool. I Whoa. Love sisters. Our sisters, no joke, man. Yep. Oh, I remember. I remember. I remember when the sisters rained firepower down <laughs> upon us. Yes. Thank. Like, Surely he won't be. Able oh, God, he did. <clears throat> uh, some of you are in our Discord, and I see Brother Thomas, uh, Hellchild, is putting together a badass looking uh, in chaos night. So check that out. Just five more Storm Boys to find. Then I can start getting my army packed. Nice. nice. His Storm Boys, by the way, have the, are these cool tire caps that look like little rockets that he converted into jump packs. Looks really cool. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. If you guys like tonight's episode, make sure that you... 
grab up an ox and smash that. I wasn't ready. Oh, no. my God. All right, there. And smash that like button in the name of the emperor. Do it with the Gosh. ox, though. You got to smash it with the ox. Man. Drop us some comments down below if you're watching from the archives. If you're ready to be part of any of these ridiculous conversations. And if you guys are not yet subscribed to our friends below, which I really need to update, by the way. And if you're not subscribed to these guys, I know at the very least... This beautiful Freakalicious here. And this guy would love to have you as part of the pack here on the Frost and Fist. Until next time, guys. Hey, Frost. Stay frosty.